Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to X Television and EVL TV in association with Blackout Gaming TV. And tonight for you, we do have the ETF2L and UGC Highlander Showmatch series, the first one, the Map, map Makers Showcase. Uh, now that that mouthful is out of the way, basically, we have a nice map showcase for you tonight. A couple of new maps, a couple of newer maps for you between two of the top teams in ETF2L. Uh, European Top League and UGC Highlander Platinum, the NA side. I'm CJ, with me tonight is Mario and Dashner on the production. Mario, how you doing, man? Doing pretty good, CJ. Uh, went and got a sandwich for lunch. I just finished eating it and uh, ready to watch some good Highlander tonight. Oh, nice. Was it a turkey sandwich? Because, I mean, it's, you know, it's Christmas time. Uh, it was, yes, it was, actually, with some bacon, yeah. Pretty good, good. I, I approve. I approve. So, um, I'm going to be at the mercy of you for this first, uh, this first section because I have no idea. I've never played this map before. The first map we've got today is Vanguard. Um, it's a little bit complicated in terms of what we're doing and how we're doing it. There's actually going to be five different rounds. There's going to be three maps but five rounds. So the first round is going to be played on Vanguard for half an hour. It's going to be on an EU server and it's going to be played to EU rules. So that's a win difference of five. The second round is going to be half of a Barn Blitz round on an EU server. Round three, half of a barn flits on an American server. Round four, we'll be back onto Vanguard on an NA server, running to any UGC rules. And finally, we'll be playing product, and the server will be decided by the players, whichever they felt was best to play on. So Vanguard, Mary, um, what do you think of it? What's up? CJ, I think you're, you're cut out. Oh, did I cut out there? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Vanguard, I was just going to say, like, what what do you think of the map? Uh, well, I played it last season. Uh, I was playing, I was on a silver team, just playing around on some soldier, and uh, it, it has a little bit of a granary feel to it. I know you Europeans like granary, especially in sixes, so it might uh, might play out pretty nice for you guys. But it, it kind of plays like a foundry, but it feels like a granary. Uh, it's kind of a really weird map. It's got a weird art style to it. Uh, I kind of feel like I'm playing prop hunt whenever I play on it. There's just so much clutter all over the place. Um, but it's kind of fun. I mean, it, it's really different. Uh, it's got some cool sight lines. It's got some cool task, uh, tactics. It's pretty vertical. Uh, there's a lot of places to jump to. It's a pretty fun map. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy playing it. I can hear the passion in your voice. You must love <laughs> this map. <laughs> oh, oh um, I, I love it. It's, it's a great map. It, it, it's pretty fun. It'll be interesting to see how these uh, teams play it, because as far as I'm aware, I mean, uh, Europeans uh, do play UGC. We do we do dabble on it from time to time, uh, but I know that High Panda don't have a a dedicated UGC team. And I'm not sure how many of these players actually will have played this map unless it was in sort of pubs. Um, so maybe uh, maybe DK uh, will have a little bit of a an advantage here. Do you want to take us over their rosters? We do have all of them in here, and um, obviously you're going to have much better knowledge on all of these American players than I do. Yeah, sure. Uh, starting out, we got one of the greatest TF2 players of all time. We have Banny playing Scout. Uh, we have uh, Mumon Soldier, who just recently got picked up by Banny on Furrier Tech. Uh, we have, I believe, Satan is ringing Pyro right now for DK, as they currently don't have anybody on their roster. Um, we have the legendary Zan on Demo Man, uh, the Abs Carl Sagan on Heavy, uh, the Hitscan Master Jordan on Engineer, the uh, Throwing Machine Metawi on Medic. Uh, we have Aimbot Corsa on Sniper, and the 102 Master Akuma is on Spy. The 102 Master. I mean, I'm, maybe for America. I mean, my my teammate is the 102 Master of Europe. So let's not <laughs> let's not let's not generalize. You know, pleasantries are over now. We, this is this is the crux of this is it is EU versus NA, and we're all here just to see once and for all that Europe is um it's just better at TF2, and that's going to be proven tonight in this uh, glorious Highlander show match. I don't um, know. Yeah, <laughs> We'll, for, we'll forget about I-55, it was fine. Nobody, nobody needs to talk about that. This is Highlander, remember? Um, we are missing a few players from High Panda roster uh, in the server. Apparently Doom has to finish off a pub duel. Um, so we're Pretty waiting for him. Man. It's important. very important. I mean, you can't let those pubbers get too cocky. They kill you. You've got to get, you've got to get back at them. Um, but we'll talk about the people who are here. So on Scout, we've got Ast, who is uh, has actually voted 
Prem debut of the season in uh, ETF 12 sixes recently. He's very, very impressive on Scout. We've got Zub. He's been around the block many a time with High Panda. Gorston on Pyro. Uh, their demo tonight will be their leader, Hildreth, who in Europe we refer to him as the king of Highlander um, because he just he, he knows a lot about Highlander. And, you know, he's got... I wonder want to use the word respect. I'm not sure people respect Hildreth, but he knows a lot about Highlander, let's put it that way. Um, on Heavy, they'll be using Kunai. Um, their main is actually Polk, so American viewers out there will probably know of Polk. Played Heavy for teams like the Syndicate way back when, um, but he's unavailable over the past few weeks, so Kunai's playing for them. Um, on Engineer, they'll have Doom. He's one of the most dangerous engines in Europe at the moment. On Sniper, we've got Tracker. Uh, commonly referred to as Tracker the Hacker back in the day because he <laughs> always hits the headshots. So we'll see how he plays tonight. Um, on Medic will be Mookie. Now Mookie played almost the entire season for them as Soldier. He's well known as a Soldier. Very, very good. Um, and a bit of a lineup change has moved him to Medic for the past couple of games. And apparently, you know, the team likes it. So they're sticking with it. And finally, Grengebob, who basically kills more Medics than anyone in European Highlander, um, according to the stats. So... Stats don't um, lie. Stats don't lie. I mean, he, he goes for those backstabs and he gets them. So, I mean, how many players on the European side do you uh, do you know here? Um, I actually know quite a bit. I used to watch a lot of European Highlander back in the day of um, Vanilla TV. I was a big fan of following that. Uh, let's see, I know Hildreth, um, Polk, Obvious. Uh, I've seen Tracker, and uh, it's pretty much about it for your roster. But I do know quite a bit of uh, European names out there. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, obviously, uh, we've got a bit of ping difference and um, things like that might come into the play, but uh, Europeans do have an advantage on this. We also have some different unlocks today, don't we, uh, with regards to things that are being allowed and not allowed. Uh, I'm just going to check my, my handy little cheat sheet here. So, um, in particular, the, the, the weapons that have been banned or unbanned, we've got the Phlogistonator, which uh, is banned in ETF2L, but it's being allowed overall. Uh, Soda Popper, Sandman, Beggar's Bazooka, Lock and Ode, and Short Circuit are all banned in UGC, but they're being allowed as well. Reserve Shooter is banned in both leagues, but will be allowed tonight. Pompson and the Machina um, are both banned for a variety of reasons. Um, be interesting to see if those actually uh, make any difference tonight uh, on these kind of different maps. Yeah, I was watching uh, DK playing a scrim yesterday, and they were uh, using a lot of the unlocks, but looks like we have everybody in the server here, so I'm going to have to go ahead and start some shameless plugs. Um, down below the stream, you guys can find some links where you can donate to the league that you want to have win. Um, I'm guessing, I'm not sure if that's a prize pool or it's a direct donation to the streams, um, but both if you guys want to join, both leagues are completely free to play. Uh, both UGC and ETF2L. Um, ETF2L's Highlander play, uh, playoffs start January 3rd, with all Prem and Highlander games being casted on twitch.tv slash blackoutgamingtv. Um, next season, you can sign up. Uh, the Sixes is, is starting January 3rd as well. And uh, UGC is currently open for signups for Highlander, Sixes, and Fours, with new seasons starting out uh, January the 11th. And Plat Masters will be casted on twitch.tv slash uh, EVLTV. Um, also, don't forget there's links down below where you can purchase a shirt from EVLTV to support the casters in the stream. Uh, there is an Awa shirt, a Deer, a Flatline, and a Dashner shirt available for purchase, and they are all awesome. Uh, I'm a very big fan of the Dashner shirt. I think that's a great way to show support. Um, to casters, I mean, a lot of people, um, like ourselves, Mary, have taken times away from their evening to come here and uh, put on this show for you guys. But people like Dash and the behind the scenes do a great amount of work for TF2 and just, you know, that that exposure for the game and uh, to get these things running as we have started. And do you want to take away this first mid, mid fight? We've got High Panda in the blue and in the red DK, and they're about to come to this uh, very festive mid fight right now. Yeah, right before the men fight starts, don't forget that you can bet on each of the individual rounds on uh, saloon.tf. Uh, so we're going to start out here right now. I'm going to go on to the DK Carl cam. Looks like they're trying to peek uh, pocket course on the mid, trying to uh, peek his head out, see if he can get any type of picks. 
Uh, we got a Wrangled Mini doing a lot of work right now, and the uh, blue combo is meeting up with the red combo, and Carl gets a nice pick onto the high pander heavy, but Hildreth quickly cleans him up. Uh, Akuma going for the big tracker pick, so they have a sniper down. Uh, we're gonna probably see... Oh, actually, uh, Metawi gets... Uh, Mookie gets picked, uh, picked out on the mid, and we're gonna see Banny coming in, uh, Scooty Booty Man trying to clean up as much as he can right now. Uh, Zan goes down to a nice bomb from Zub, and uh, Kuma gets a couple picks while Banny's still running around causing havoc, and it looks like this mid is gonna go to DK. Yeah, that was really well played there by the Americans. It was like a mid fight that went on for quite long as the medic there, Meto, he takes a rocket to the face, uh, but he does have 100% Uber in the bank, ready to push on now as uh, DK are already capping that second point, getting ready to push last, and they're going to have a huge advantage over Mickey, who did die in that mid fight. And they just played it slow there, they just played it smart, played it slow, uh, kept their players alive as Banny does lose out there to Ast. That's the first scout 1v1 we've seen in this game so far. Um, but yeah, uh, Tracker there also taking it on, it's just activating the dead ringer of Rakuma. Um, and now it's just going to be about where to push from, and like I said, I've not played this map before in a competitive format, so I have no idea where to push from, um, as DK are looking to push him from the top left-hand side here. They do come in, they flash a lot of people, Demic and, uh, Demo and Soldier, but they've not come into contact with anyone at all, as the High Panda combo on the other side, but there's lots of stickies on the point, the Heavy just walks on, and DK are just going to walk onto that point, and surely going to cap it, but no, they're losing too many players as High Panda just walk down to it and Rocket Banny's in though, in on the heavy, gets gunned down by Kunai. And uh, with the only player left alive is Muma. Uh, that is a, a strong defense so far with Muki at 100% Mario and that's pretty successful. Yeah, that was a really good defense. Oh, but Muma was still in the spawn! Oh, Muma was still behind them in the spawn door. Jumps onto the point and caps it. Pretty that good was... push. Uh... Push didn't look like it worked very well, and uh, Heiner put up a great defense right there with their heavy, getting a nice couple kills at the end, cleaning up very well, but uh, looks like they missed one player, unfortunately, it was the only one that was alive. Yeah, no one checked the corners, he was right on the spawn door to come to the second mid fight now, High Panda surely wanting to have a bit of a better, There's a big jump in from Moomal and one rocket onto Muki, surfs it away and does survive, Ass cleaning him up, of course they're winning the sniper battle very, very early on. Takes down Tracker and High Panda are bleeding players. Muki goes down to Akuma's ambassador. And DK are all over this mid fight already. There's only three players left alive from the HP team. And they have to gonna they're gonna have to back out of there. And once again, I think we're gonna see a hundred percent Uber advantage for DK. Is this does look like a pause? A pause I believe. Oh uh, no, we're just a little bit of lag, a little bit of lag, man. Nothing to worry yeah, about. I'm back, I'm back. Um, but it doesn't look like DK are pushing into last straight away. They have Ubered onto the heavy and the scout, and they're just running straight onto the point. And High Panda have got to jump onto the point to stop this. This is really smart from the Americans, and uh, they are going to take this to 2-0, Mario. What, what the hell happened there? Uh, it looks like High Panda dropped the player. I believe their NG got dropped on that. I don't know if that was a short pause or he disconnected from lag. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but uh, DK pretty much cleaned everybody up and pushed forward, got aggressive, that NA aggression, usually shutting down some of that European strats and their defenses. Uh, but you guys wanted a quick fix at last right there. It looked like it was going to go through, but uh, got cleaned up a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and go in. Uh, Banny going in. Corsa getting a nice pick onto Mookie. Uh, so that is the high, uh, high pander medic down. Uh, Carl running around with his minigun, shooting some men. He gets a nice pick onto Zoo. Um, it looks like High Pender is still down a player. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to pause to get him back in here. Uh, but it looks like it is playing a massive advantage on those mids because that Wrangled Mini Sentry is quite a pain to get through. Uh, is that a pause? Did you get that it's, or are we lagging again? Yeah, I think it's another pause maybe just to let uh, Doom the NG back in. It said in the chat that he had timed. Um, and oh, a few other people are timing out here. Oh, jeez. Bunch of people are timing out. Um, this doesn't look good. We'll see what happens, I guess. Uh, the game is kind of alive, but Hildreth is just sat on the second point, not sure what's going on oh as his uh, teammates are disappearing. So um, we'll we'll see what's what's happening there. But I mean, what did you see? Let's focus on the actual game there. Like, what did you see at that mid fight? What's what's DK doing uh, that's causing them to be so successful? Well, they're giving Corsa a lot of heals and they're letting him peek through any choke that he wants. It looks like he's kind of going uncontested. Uh, he's getting a couple good picks here or there, and Banny seems to be wreaking havoc along with Mooba just jumping around the map consistently. Uh, I think High Pander missing that other that extra player is really uh, throwing a wrench into their plans to be able to defeat the DK team. Uh, 
Engineer is definitely a really good class for fighting a mid with a good area denial uh, with that mini sentry and the wrangler. Um, but it looks like people are reconnecting right now. Are we doing another mid fight or is this still freeze time? I think uh, we're, we're, we're continuing. I think we're still live here. Um, just very passive as Banny is straight on two shots, Mookie down to the ground. Uh, Medic down again for High Panda. Once again, very, very long in the fight, but there are some picks coming in from the High Panda players, and it does look like they're starting to clean up here. Uh, if they can take down Jordan, uh, slaps down a mini and gets out of there, but it does look like High Panda uh, in this 7 versus 8 mid fight somehow managed to take the fourth mid fight for their own. Uh, but that round was 3 0, so it is 3 0 to DK as it stands, and we are getting the remainder of the players into the game. Um, and yeah, once again, it seems Mookie is dying very, very early on in the mid-fights. That aggression from Muma just jumping straight into him is so good, because even though he's died every single time, uh, that distraction just causes the Hypander combo to look at him and uh, allow somebody else, like Corsa or somebody else, to just come in and, uh, and clean up the kills. Um, and Hypander looking here, they do not have an uber advantage, but um, that's going to allow DK to get a little bit of a more defense on this second point, which again, uh, they're being very aggressive with it, Mario. Yeah, Gorson ran in there at the end of that uh, at the end of that mid fight and got a nice pick onto Zan and Medui, uh, forcing Medui to go down. It looks like Mookie's going to be to a 25% advantage, and uh, DK is just holding on second, trying to watch out for uh, for where these high standard players are coming in from. But it looks like Vanny is trying to take a 1v1 with Zoo, and it looks like they're going to trade. Uh, we got Corsa trying to peek, Akuma against 102s. Uh, and it looks like some of the high planters are going to start bleeding here. Uh, Zan gets a nice pick on two trackers, so that is a sniper down, and they are only currently three up on blue team, so we're going to see DK come in here and take this midpoint. Yeah, I mean, the reason for the huge uber advantage there was that Mookie changed it to a quick fix when he died. So he had this huge advantage to play with, but one by one, the high planter combo was just bleeding there, and finally Corsa got the headshot onto Hildreth, which basically just shut down the push. And now we're onto equal ubers, but it's a, it's a quick fix versus an uber, and that's not really what you do. As DK come in, and they flash the uber loads of times, and Mookie goes down to Banny, and the cleanup is just coming in as DK players come in from all the different areas. But Corsa's in on the medic, takes him down, he's using the reserve shooter, takes down Carl and Metui, using the reserve shooter. Should it be banned, Mario? Who knows? Oh, Maybe I that is that gonna be a... Uh, that's going to be the first bullet point for someone to say it's overpowered, but uh, DK nevertheless are going to take the second point. Man, that weapon is, is something else. Even though Carl was only about like 50 health, that weapon did uh, give him to an opportunity for a great medic pick, so we're going to see... Is Mookie still on a quick fix and are we at a pause? Yeah, I think we are. I think maybe this is just to get um, Doom the NG back in now because he's still not coming from that first initial disconnect. And uh, I suppose High Panda are getting a little bit frustrated playing 8v9 all the time. But yeah, Mookie is, he's on Medigun. He does yeah, have a small advantage. Down. I mean, I mean, what's your what's your thoughts on, on Quick Fix? Is it used much in, in American Highlander? Because in, in sort of, in etf 2 we do see it sometimes on King of the Hill and 5CP maps. That, you know, if you want that aggression, you can get those heals up. You can pump them into the key players. Uh, maybe that's what Mookie was thinking earlier on. I mean, I don't know what your thoughts are. Uh, the quick fix is pretty viable. I think I saw a couple teams using it at the end of last season on Cop Warm Tick. Um, it's a very open map and it, it's very, uh, very forgiving with the aggression and the extra heals that you can receive from the from the quick fix. Um, I think it's a very viable medigun for defending last when you have a severe uh, uber disadvantage. That extra heals and the very fast uber build it, uh, uber that you can build can uh, potentially lead your uh, team to a defense and maybe even pushing out. Um, I think with the recent update where you can't cap points with it when you're Ubered might give it a small little nerf, but I think it's still a very good side grade and a very situational medigun that you can usually fall back on if you need to. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm a medic main myself. I do like using the quick fix. I think it makes it a bit more fun for uh, the medic. But yeah, that recent nerf where you can't cap with it anymore just kind of... It doesn't make it unviable, but it does make it, you know, a little bit awkward, um, to say the least. But we have unpaused now, so we're going to have a little bit of TF2 on ice. As Crinchable gets a backstab onto Banny there, um, so no cheeky caps running in. And uh, it seems High Panda have chosen this kind of, this point up on the top right hand side. It seems to be the best height advantage, covers a couple of the areas, but what DK did is they just used in from the lower areas, just Ubered in onto the point, got so much cap time. And uh, it forces High Panda to take the lower ground. So interesting to see what they do this time as they're just kind of probing as Muma's just shooting a couple of rockets, trying to find out where everybody is. 
Um, and a game on a five kill streak does take down Kunai. So he's hitting those 102s, Mario. You killed him yes. earlier. <laughs> I played against that man. It's not very fun. But uh, a couple changes of this map that I'm noticing on last. There used to be a ramp up on that left side that lifted any, uh, anybody from the defending team get up into that window room. Uh, and that's where people usually used to hold. But it looks like DK is going to come in here and pop their uber, sending Muma in, trying to get a force. And uh, High Pounder does pop their uber, Muki using it. Uh, we're probably going to see DK come in here, try to get some spam, see if they can soften up the blue team a little bit before they come back in. It looks like Van's getting a little bit crazy, he's going to jump in. Vanny comes in from the side and cleans up four people and caps the point. Five people, that's in and around kill, it doesn't really count, but yeah. Yeah, to be fair, I think two of those uh, towards the end there were end around kills, but he did exactly what I said there. He just walked in onto the point, everyone's focused and trying to chase down the, fla uh, the frags as people were backing out. And uh, Vanny just walks onto the point, he does what a scout does, he just caps. Um, and that times two just makes it far too fast for people to get um, on their defense. We do have another mid fight now. Hopefully, a, a fully fledged mid fight with everybody here. As Tracker this time gets the headshot onto Corsa, so there's going to be sniper advantage for the Europeans as Jordan goes down to a backstab. And uh, just the aggression here from DK, they've already taken the other side. Even though they are three players down, they do have the, the, the area. Zoom jumps in uh, but gets taken down by Metawi. Uh, somehow, I think he created from an arrow there. Great play there by the uh, the Merc Medic tonight. And uh, DK somehow, even though they're on an uber disadvantage because Metic wasn't healing, uh, they do have this mid fight. But High Panda are coming back in. Spike comes in from behind, takes down Muki with the backstab. Kunai all oh, almost gets backstab. Uh, she is going to gun him down. Uh, but still, DK are probably going to cap this out. Yeah, I thought for sure that that mid was going to be for High Pander, although they are still down one extra player. I believe Doom is still disconnected from the beginning. I'm not quite sure what's happening there. Uh, but even with the player disadvantage, it looked like High Pander pressure, uh, persevered through that uh, tracker getting the pick on a course that looks like it was really opening up an opportunity for them. But uh, looks like High Pander's trying to defend their second right now. Uh, Luma cleaning up a couple kills gets a nice pick onto the heavy. Uh, we're gonna see the red combo, uh, DK combo go over to the left. Uh, Metawi and Muki are at equal uber, about 25% each. And uh, we're probably gonna see DK cap the second point, but Luma jumping in gets a nice bomb onto Muki and gets killed at a 5 kill streak after that bomb. Nice play. Yeah, I was watching Ass, he was just going around, just killing stuff. That's what we've come to know uh, from him this season, just running around and doing his thing. Um, but unfortunately, there was no one kind of hit scan to protect the medic, and Muma there just doing a great bomb. He's done some really, really good jumps so far in this game. Just jumped in, took down uh, Muki and Zoop at the same time. Doesn't look like DK just going to get capture time on this point, force High Panda to at least defend it. Um, we have had Bubble Bobbler, who is. Uh, Actually, one of the, the map creators sorry, from one of the maps we're going to be playing later. He's coming as their backup NG for High Panda. So we are 9v9 again. And uh, High Panda actually stopped this for now. They are getting pressure on this doorway. Heavy Carl is just tanking that damage and not moving. Gets a couple of kills in doing so. Zoop goes down, but then DK coming. Big one from Muma. Takes down Kunai with the second rocket. Doesn't manage to get Muki. Muki is out of there. Uh, but he's only got tracker for company, and that's going to be a not enough. <laughs> Although it does take down Satan, but this is looking like it could be 5 0 for DK very, very soon. Yeah, High Panda got, the, got their ninth player back in here. Except you guys got the map creator, so I don't know if, he's, if he knows any secrets to the map. Uh, but it looks like there are a couple extra little things that he added. But anyway, uh, we have High Panda Uber coming out to defend last. We have Akuma trying to cap the point. Uh, DK is over on the right side door with a wrangled minion. Course of peeking, uncontested for free. Uh, Course gets a nice pick onto uh, the heavy for High Pander, and we're about even right now. Both medics are kill. Uh, I don't know who's going to come up first, but we're going to see that reserve shooter from Gorston come out trying to get some frags. But it looks like High Pander is going to defend their last for now while DK resets. Yeah, I mean, only three alive, but once again, we've got to keep careful as the damage just comes in. Great shot by Tracker to take down Zan, who, uh, as I was about to predict it, he walked onto the point. I um, was just trying to sticky it off there, but High Panda may be a little bit more alert after that happening uh, against him by Banny earlier on. And looking at Corsa, he does take down Tracker, keeping that sniper buff, just watching the sightlines has been a great job, as Grengible gets a backstab onto Carl. 
Maybe that's just going to slow things down a bit. Mookie does have an uber advantage. Very small, but uh, it is there. And it's going to stop DK from doing it. But someone needs to stop Corsa. He's just looking through these sight lines. He's on a six kill streak. And nobody seems to be blocking these sight lines, or at least on the EU team. Like, be aware of them, Mary. I mean, they're just kind of unaware as finally he goes down. Um, but maybe that's a bit of lack of map knowledge playing into uh, into all these sniper shots here. Yeah, that's probably one of the problems. Uh, I think I saw that their most of their entire team was holding in that upper window room. And uh, the couple people that were left to defend last just got picked off by Corsa from that right side door. Um, I think Hypander really needs to def start defending their medic a lot better here. Uh, try to get some hit scan players to play around him, because right now Muma is just going on an absolute rampage, getting any medic frag that he wishes to pick. Uh, but they also need to clean up some of their sight lines and uh, put some people to watch some doorways, but they're not doing bad. Uh, right now, they probably could push out to second. DK has three people down, Banny, Akuma, and Muma are all dead, so hopefully we see Blue push out right now. They do have 100% Uber, and they're both equal, so probably going to see an exchange here in a couple seconds. Uh, it looks like Hypander wants to go lower, uh, a new flank that they did add in this recent update. It looks like Carl's going to get caught out here by Hildreth, but Hildreth decides not to chase and Carl gets out with his life. Yeah, just kind of playing a little bit slow. Zmuma does come in again, um, but there is a level 2 sentry holding on top of this uh, next to this spawn door, and that's just going to deny any jumpers, maybe anyone just trying to sneak in onto the point. And Hypanda here trying to get a little bit more aggressive, maybe just uh, peeking, see if they get anything. His Corsair is very far forward, but he can't land the shot, and uh, he's going to get forced out. He's so weak here, he needs to get a buff before peeking again. Um, but maybe that's just going to be uh, the moment for High Panda to just think, right, we can start walking forward now. As Hildris just dropping a couple of stickies, just edging his bets. Uh, maybe they're just learning the map a little bit now as Panny comes in again and gets gunned down by Kunai. And they're aware of this entry course, and they tries to take down Bubble Bobbler, um, but just gets destroyed by the level 3. And uh, we're going to see some action here soon. As High Panda try and come out, they have used the Uber. They get lots of damage onto Zan. He's going to get dropped here. Finally goes down to the minigun. And uh, so many players have died here that Uber hasn't been used by TK, but at the same time, uh, they are pushing into last. You've got the Spy on last, Akuma trying to go for the Sentry. And this is all a bit chaotic as the Uber has been used by Metaway. Straight onto the... Oh, Gorston comes in, takes down Metaway. And uh, didn't have to use the reserve shoot at that time, Mario, but uh, yeah. he got him nevertheless. Yeah, Metaway got cut out right there. He, uh, he had 7 health and his Uber got forced up in that upper building, which is... Uh... Not a very good play, and looks like it shut down DK's push. Uh, Metawi is dead, and Mookie is back up with a 60% uber advantage. Gonna continue to grow. I feel like we just hit another pause? What is that? Yeah, that it, seems, it seems like another pause. Um, no one's disconnected on my screen yet, but perhaps uh, someone will within the next 90 seconds. But yeah, I mean, 60% uber in the bank. How many down? Five down for DK. There isn't a better time for High Panther to try and push out this last point. I mean, as we normally see on 5 CP maps, it is very difficult to push out from your last. You have that threat of a back cap going on. Um, it seems especially so on this map. And obviously, you just, you know, you have to force your way through. At the moment, we've got Muma here watching underneath. Maybe, maybe just, you know, opting for a back cap or something like that. The sentry is down now from Bubble Wobbler, um, thanks to Akuma earlier on. So maybe Muma's thinking of a back cap. Um, as High Panda are pushing out this uh, this left hand side that Jordan is currently look at, but Corsa for me has been the one doing so much work, and I just think the fact that he is taking advantage of these sight lines, High Panda players probably aren't aware of these sight lines at all, um, and that's meant he's won a lot of the sniper battles. It's meant he's got a lot of key picks, and if your sniper is consistently getting those frags, then you know you're just going to struggle if you're always one or two players down. Yeah, and a uh, bubble bottler coming in for high pender right there, building that level two. I don't know if you got to level three on last, but definitely shut down a couple of the pushes and the sacks that DK tried to make to get into their last point. Um, so that one extra player does make a very large advantage. Hopefully, next round we'll have a full nine v nine mid. So I'm looking pretty, uh, looking forward to that. Should be exciting. Hopefully, we get our first one this whole game. Um, but yeah, Mookie does have that 60% uber and with enough picks they should be able to push uh, push out right here and get a free second. Uh, there's only a couple light classes alive although Corsa is up so watch your head uh, he will shoot it um, but yeah we should see a high pander cap here for second. 
I mean, Corsair is at 8 HP. Someone just needs to tickle it, and I'm sure he will go down. Um, and uh, yeah, we do have a lot of a um, lot of lot of space here for High Panther to push into, and you know, it'd be interesting to see if they take advantage of that. Yeah, I don't know if you uh, I don't know if you read the UGC forums at all, but <clears throat> have you read any of the threads about the uh, the Machina? What's your What's your thoughts on the Machina? Uh, well, for me, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a medic mate, so if someone's going to body shot me, it doesn't matter what it is, it's going to die. I'm going to die from it, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think the difference is it, it, it's 173, 174 damage. Uh, it does from a body shot, which some people argue, I guess, oh, it means your sniper takes more time to get buffed and all of this. Um, in Europe, we don't whine about that. <laughs> we just, it's allowed, you know, and you just have to, to bear that in mind. Generally, people don't use it. It's not seen as an automatic buff um, for the sniper. It is sometimes used. We see it on, you know, payload defense. We have seen it, you know, because you can get those collaterals on the on the cart. Um, we've seen it used on CP steel. Um, again, because you've got those tight corridors, you can shoot through people, and you know, it can do a lot of damage. But in general, I don't think uh, it's it's that big of a deal. So, I mean, I don't know. Do you, do you think it should be banned? Um, as an engineer main, I usually just get shot and get killed by snipers just like you. Um, so I see no difference, but I've read a lot about it and, uh, I can understand the backstory behind it and why it should be banned. Uh, I'm pretty excited to see a Viaduct game without it being used, because the past couple of seasons have been, uh, coming up causing a little bit of controversy and, uh, a lot of people have just been using it and it really sucks getting body shot, especially when you're at, like, uh, you're at like a buff, and you know it, it's kind of not very fun. But it looks like we are on pause, and High Panther does push out to their second uh, with their Uber charge. My HUD is currently broken, so I can't tell you the exact percentages. But I guess I'm gonna guess that Muki probably is at 90 percent. Uh, we see Mumu coming in for a bomb, trying to get a pick on the Muki, but the defend uh, defend, and Muki is still alive. Uh, we got a couple frags coming in from High Panther. DK is down three. Uh, their combo is not too close, and it looks like... I'm just watching, sorry, the soldier Mume uh, just walked in and was just staring at Muki for a split second there. And Muki was like, do I pop the Uber? Is he going to die? And finally, uh, he ha did have to use that Uber uh, in order to stay alive as Mume was... His rocket was imminent as Zan just come in and gets a 3k with his stickies. He's on Hildred and Muki. And uh, the Uber is used by Metoe, and it looks like DK are going to hold on to this point. I know Zan gets backstabbed there by Grengerbob, and that's maybe going to slow down the push. Metoe doesn't really have anyone for company other than Jordan, and there is a level 3 by Bubble Bobbler uh, in this lobby area. And uh, I think this is where all of the pauses and unpause uh, happened, Mario. So we do have our, our full quota of players now, and I think we can, uh, we can carry on with 9v9 as Highlander is supposed to be played. Yeah, hey, sorry, my mic died right there in the middle of uh, in the middle of me going on. So can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay, yeah, I had to plug it uh, had to plug it back in, but it looks like course is gonna go down to a uh, nice shot from Tracker. We have Banny going in, running around, doing causing a little bit of chaos. Uh, my HUD is still broken, so I don't know the Uber percentages, but I believe that uh, Mookie has not died yet. Uh, we probably are gonna see an exchange here soon. Uh, we have Akuma behind people, not really much going on, but we have Gorson going in on the DK combo using that reserve shooter, but it looks like Zan's going to get out alive. Uh, we have Corsa peeking up, coming through mid, seeing what he can see, but he runs into a scout, so he's probably going to retreat. Sees a shot on the medic, takes it, and whiffs. Uh, but Gurdjibob gets a nice pick onto Zan, uh, causing that DK push to fail, but High Pender does lose a lot of players in that exchange, and looks like they're going to try to fall back and defend their last right now, as DK is coming in by storm. Yeah, that was just a, a bad turn of events there, as people were dying out of sync, and Muki had his Uber, but lost a lot of his teammates in the in the, in the process of holding that Uber. DK already in on last, moving with a big jump, he's just on the point, jumps again away, but there's only two players left alive for High Pender, they've dropped a player again, uh, not sure who it is this time, I think it's the heavy uh, Kunai. Uh, and Metoi is in on last, he's down to 20 HP, surely gonna die here, don't tell me he's gonna make it out of there, he does, and uh, DK just flood the point, and that makes it a 5-0 uh, on this map, or at least the first portion of this map, and uh, that's pretty convincing, but uh, with all of the disconnects and the timeouts and the changing of players, I suppose Hypander are gonna feel they're a little bit uh, hard done by here. 
Yeah, it kind of stinks that we didn't get like an actual full game with the disconnections and everything. So I'm hoping that uh, if we switch servers or maybe hit up one of the NA servers, uh, the connection will be a little bit better and we won't have any uh, any players disconnecting because it's a pretty exciting game and I really want to see like a fair game. I mean, DK did win kind of most of those fights, but in High Pander's defense, they were down a player probably two thirds of the game. So I'm gonna have to give them the uh, the benefit of the doubt on that one. Yeah, this is. Uh, we are going to see this map again later on, so uh, let's not forget why we're all here. This is, is EU versus NA, um, so you can chant USA or EU in the chat if your Neanderthal mind decides to. <laughs> but uh, we are here to look at the maps, Mario. I mean, I, this is my first real experience of this map in a competitive setting. My team um, got a, given a default win on this map in UGC last season, didn't get the chance to experience it, and it's... Uh, it's been interesting. I mean, there's some, there's a lot of flanking areas. There's a lot of sort of areas which, you know, people are obviously taking advantage of the high ground on each of the points. Um, and it just seems, even though High Panda clearly haven't played the map before, they are immediately picking up those areas where you kind of need to hold and, you know, you know, the, the best areas to be holding and pushing from. Um, I mean, do you, in all honesty, do you think this uh, could become a staple in, in the Highlander map fixture? Um... I, I don't really think so. Uh, it, it, it's kind of, like I said earlier, it's kind of a granary. And uh, I know a lot of people don't really like granary in NA, especially, uh, especially in Highlander. Um, 5CP doesn't play very well in Highlander. I, I personally, I enjoy it, but a lot of people don't really like 5CP and a lot of people want to see it phased out. Um, but I would like to see it in. But did we get a map change? Yeah, yeah like I think we're moving change. on to Barn Blitz now. I'm not sure what server will be on whether it's European or whether it's uh, American, but we'll be playing two rounds of Barn Blitz, one on each server. Um, so yeah, we'll be seeing uh, we'll be seeing Barn Blitz, and that was included in the map rotation for uh, ETF to well this season. Um, I agree with you on 5CP. 5CP is something that, you know, for Sixes players, it's a staple in their map. It's, it's essentially the only maps they play. You get the odd King of the Hill in there, you know, Viaduct is played uh, here and there. Um, but 5CP in... In 6v6 TF2 is just the norm. And in Highlander, because of the number of players, because of the, the types of classes we've got, you know, things like pyros and, you know, there's always snipers, it just slows it down. And perhaps it doesn't make it entertaining to play or watch. I suppose that's the, the negative. You do get a lot of stalemates. Uh, in ETF2, well, we've essentially just slimmed it down to Gully Wash and Process. Those are the only 5 CP maps we play anymore. Um, and it has been that way for a while now. Um, because all of these other maps do, I mean, Granary that you, you've mentioned before, it doesn't lend itself to be entertaining to watch or to play. Um, but I don't know. I mean, that was that was a quite a hard map to judge uh, based on all the difficulties. So maybe later on uh, this evening when we'll say, see it played again, we'll see a bit of the difference. Um, but yeah, um, we'll be moving on to Barn Blitz now. Have you, have you played Barn Blitz recently? Um, I haven't actually. Season, what was it? Season 8? And I think season 10, they brought it back with Barn Blitz Pro, uh, where they changed last significantly. They added a couple extra flanks. They added that flank to the left. Um, never been a big fan of Barn Blitz. I don't really like the the second point where the defense has such the the such like the dominant high ground up on that little platform. Um, it can be a fun map. Usually, the way it works is there's a really really good hold at first. Um, if you don't back up fast enough. You usually get rolled through second, but if you do manage to defend second, it's a very, very, very hard point to push. Um, and then from second to third, the points are so close. Generally, if you take second, you do get third for free. And then the infinite, uh, infamous barn blitz last, the impossible egg to crack. Uh, I do not like this map. It has been played before. I have played it, and it's just no fun. It usually gives me PTSD every time I play this map. So. <laughs> Uh, sounds sounds like a true engine mate, not liking a payload map. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of people in the European scene, at least, call this payload last, um, simply because you know it's the last point. I, I've payload seen payload last. <laughs> payload last. Yeah, I mean, I've seen and I've played in games. I've casted games um, over the past couple of years where you can roll the first three points. I've seen teams roll them in two or three minutes, and you think, "Wow, this is going to be a really, really fast time," and they end up not being able to cap last. Um, and that was the big, I think, the big problem with this map was the fact that it was very, very easy to defend last. 
and that lent into it that if you didn't cap, if you didn't defend last, sorry, then you put yourself at a huge disadvantage. So teams were basically giving up the second and third points in order to just get that, you know, that turtly hold on last point. Um, mm -hmm. So it kind of all revolved around the last point. But the changes that have been made to the map, I mean, there were tweaks made to the map last night, which I'm just spotting a couple now, which is very interesting. Um, but the ones uh, especially that have made it, um, into ETF to Wells rotation this season, at least. You know, you talked about this new flank area. We call it new flank. That's literally what uh, <laughs> our team calls it, new flank. Creative um, over there, and you're all yeah, fine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and it, it really does open things up a bit. It adds like a new sight line for people. It adds, you know, an area for people to get into. This front stairs on last as well. It's been made wider, so it's more difficult to hold it, um, and it's a bit easier for you to just force your way up there. Um, and the other thing was um, this uh, this area on the back right. It's kind of got a ramp, which means that if you push in from the new flank area, you can actually just run up and be you know in front of where the spawn used to be on top. Um, and it's you know you get some height advantage fairly quickly. So it does give a little bit more advantage if you are aggressive when you're pushing. Um, but I've noticed a new like kind of spawn area from last. I don't yeah, know if you're I watching saw that. From, yeah. I, I was looking through some of the players' paws and uh there's like this multi door like spawn room leading to like first and then like leading to last. It uh looked pretty cool. They did change the forwards uh the first forward spawn for blue, which is the first spawn for red. Uh that got moved over to like that back right hand corner and uh I saw a couple extra little flanks over by lockers. I think there was like a door under there that lead led into like some room. Uh my free cam isn't working, so I can't quite describe it very well, though. Yeah, I mean, there's this. This is really. I mean, I'm just. I'm learning this all from the time. We call this this little area drop down uh, near, basically right on top of the second point. Um, the second point is actually moved. Um, oh yeah, so if it's you're not, not yeah. anymore. No, the second point used to be where this big B was. Um, used to be right on top, but now you actually have to go past the the doorway, I guess. Um, into this grassy area, that is where the point has to be captured now. Um, so that makes a big difference as well. But also, as we look on top, this is where uh, engineers usually build their sentries because it watches the tracks, it uh, protects you and stuff like that. And they put dispensers on the stairs and that blocks people from running up. But this area, which we call drop down, which is a, a nifty escape route or a flanking route if you want to get your soldier to jump up there, it's now got a doorway and that doorway leads right around to where the engineers generally build on third. So I mean, I would say the High Panda are going to know this map. They've played it this season, you know, a few weeks ago. But I really think all of these new flank routes are really open for experimentation from both teams. It'll be interesting to see how they, they work it out. Yeah, definitely. I know uh, DK did scrim this last night, so they have a little bit of experience with the map. But uh, I want to say that High Panda is probably going to win this. Uh, I want to see a nice, good game coming out of them. But I think with... Uh, with... with uh, with their experience on the map, they should probably take this this one from DK. I don't think any Highlander has played Farm Blitz for maybe like six seasons. It's been quite a while. I mean, at heart, they're all Highlander players. They're all TF2 players, at least. Uh, so I'm sure over the, the coming minutes, it will come to them naturally. Uh, we are still on the European server. Uh, we'll be playing another round of Barn Blitz again on an American server. But here we go. We've got High Panda in the blue that will be attacking first with DK in the red. Uh, here we go, it's a big jump in from Lumi. Just maybe just to scope out what was going on. Looking at Akuma at the moment, onto that car, but gets double piped by Hildreth. Somehow survives thanks to that new uh, nerf, or sorry, buff on the Dead Ringer. Um, and yeah, we're just seeing some. Oh, uh, he ran right into a sentry gun and died. Uh, but it looks like Jordan is, uh, he actually moved his sentry gun from, in, uh, from the normal spot, which is inside house, and it's actually watching the courtyard out back. Um, I have seen that before. I think oh, I did wait, that. Wait, what are you talking about, Mary? That is the traditional spot. Oh, that what? is the you, European you see, sentry I, spot. I, 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 haven't, I haven't played this since uh, the meta was build the sentry gun in the house. It's been that <laughs> long, man. Uh, well, generally in a in European TF2, we see it in this position. Um, and it gives that kind of second line of defense. It's a big bomb in from Moomo. Oh, he drops Mookie. Two rockets, that's all it took. And Mookie is down. No Uber him as Metaway is still alive. And lots of high panda players just launching themselves in. Zoob managed to take down Carl there, and the Uber is used by DK. He's trying to keep people alive. Muma just 
surprised, I think, in the chat that he managed to get the drop there. Um, but DK decided to get out of here. Ass is just forcing them back. Um, trying to gun them down. Hildreth are going down to the 102 from Akuma. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see if DK decided. It looks like they are going to hold on this second point. Oh, they Tiger don't have an engine. Nice shot on the metal wheel. It's a nice pick right there. And, uh... Yeah, I, I didn't quite see where he um, where he came from. He just kind of walked in. He just managed to headshot Akuma as well. And Hypan are just being really, really aggressive here. Uh, but DK still deciding to hold their resolve, keeping and um, building a sentry up on second. Gets taken down straight away. Um, and Kunai is just walking forward. The backstab comes in from Grenjival, takes down Carl. Um, Tracker takes down Corsa. And Hypan should be just flooding forward here. They have the players. They have the Uber. Um, Mookie may be a little bit more nervous now that he's going to get dropped. So are you back with us, Mario? I think I think we've lost Mario for the time being. Um, I'm sure he'll tell us when he'll get back. There's his aggressive sentry here uh, from Jordan, just a level one, and that's going to go down very very quickly. Um, but it is uh, looks like DK are trying to build some sort of defense on third here. They've used this extra flank by the drop down, and Gorson is trying to just deflect Mooma, but Mooma's not shooting the rockets. And get some help from Bally as the Uber is used by Hypander on tracks. Big jump in, but Hildred just gets tracked out of the sky from that Wrangler. And Carl is so far forward, he's going to take down Kunai and Hildred. He's still alive! Finally goes down to Zoob. He takes down Mookie as well with help from Mooma. And uh, Hypander do get the second point, but at what cost? They've lost their entire combo and their medic. Metari at 100% Uber. And uh, looking strong to hold this third point, which is. Essentially, the second best place to get some time, other than last. Can, can you hear me? I think I'm. Back. I can hear you now, Mario. Welcome okay, back. sorry about that. My I don't know. My mic disconnected or something. Um, but anyway, we got uh, Mookie coming up. Uh, he's res uh, respawning is at 30% Uber. While Metal does have a 100% charge. Um, we have Jordan with a level three sentry gun defending that third point. So we got Bonk Cola coming out from Ass, trying to uh, trying to deflect that sentry gun fire. Trying to give uh, his team a little bit of room to push in here. Uh, where they are going to need uh, to kill that level 3 from Jordan if they want to get this point. It's going to uh, cause so much area denial. He does pick it up though, so they're slowly rebuilding. But we have Tracker uh, keeping an eye out on that Engineer pick. I saw the little dot on his uh, on his forehead there. I don't know why he didn't click. Oh, uh, but sorry, we have Zoom sorry to interrupt. That's a drop. Metu, he didn't have his medigun out. He got his crossbow trying to defend himself. He dropped his entire team there. Um, I don't know what DK were doing, I don't know what was going through their minds. Muma jumped in early and taken down Mookie, they had 100% uber advantage, the other team had no medic. Highbander just held their ground, DK tried to walk forward and they just lost players, they bled players one by one. And now Mookie somehow died in all of that. Um, but more yeah, importantly, Highbander have taken the uh, third point here Mario, and that's, it was very odd from DK, they just kind of threw that away there. Yeah, I think DK was in the transition from backing up from 3rd to 4th, and uh, during that time it looks like some of the DK players got a little bit ahead of Metawi uh, in backing up and left Metawi alone. Uh, although, I don't know why he didn't have his midigan out, but it was a very nice bomb from Zoo, but getting a nice pick onto the DK medic there. Uh, but we are going to see DK holding last right here. They do have a level 3 up in the middle of the room, uh, so that shouldn't be too hard to take out. Uh, especially with the spy bus recently, uh, not very fun playing engineer anymore when your sentry gun just gets destroyed instantly by anything. Uh, but it looks like Hypander is going to choose to go up the man main staircase here. They're getting ready to go. They have a 100% uber advantage. Actually, Metawi goes down. Uh, I'm not sure what killed him, but we're going to see Hypander come in here uh, with a full uber advantage, trying to kill that sentry gun. We have the Hypander scout going into the spawn, trying to cause some havoc. Uh, Tracker going absolutely monstrous right now, picks up a kill on Jordan and uh, Corsa. Car goes down a nice pick from the Hypander Heavy. Here comes Zan alone, and uh, he's going to get cleaned up by Hildred. Uh, we have the Heavy from Hypander actually eating a sandwich in <laughs> in the spawn. He's going to just a 1v1 with Banny, uh, but it looks like Banny's going to let him live. We have Hypander pushing the card. They need to get times 3 on that, uh, or else they're not going to win this push. That mini sentry doing a lot of work from Jordan, uh, and Carl just trying to clean up what he can. I mean, that was kind of, I don't want to say basic mistakes from High Panda, but you know, you only need times three on the car, and as soon as they, I mean, they did the right thing, they Ubered in, flashed loads of people in, got the kills, they cleaned up on the kills, but the respawn times 
on some key classes with DK. It was only about two seconds after that. And uh, they didn't hold off the spawns. Hildreth tried to do it, but he was pretty much by himself. And uh, that meant that the DK respawns came in and cleaned up. Muma, I swear, has just got Mookie's name like in a death book or something. I don't know. Like He just wants to kill Mookie non-stop. I think he's just, just got eyes for the medic. Um, and he seems to do it really, really effectively. Um, and he managed to take down Mookie on that cart and clean up some other people as well. So we are at this kind of stalemate. Again, Metawi with 100% Uber. High Panda just approaching there at 70%. I have to think of something different. But I mean, the main thing is the cart is awfully a lot closer now. And Jordan running minis. I mean, what do you feel about minis holding on last points on payload? Uh, it's a lot more fun, but it's nowhere near as effective. Um, although Jordan makes it work with his, he's got such good hit scan A in that he is a sentry gun. He doesn't need the level 3. Um, but the level 3 does give a lot of errors and I'll Oh, look oh, at Corsa! I'm oh, sorry to interrupt, but Corsa there, he just walked through the new flank and just had a, an open sight onto Mookie but didn't get the kill. And As is getting a lot of the Uber hit, but finally gets gunned down by Carl. Um, and lots of players down for DK and weak. Metwe is still dead, so no heals for the American team. And they are bleeding players now. That mini does go down. And, um, but no, income oh, from behind. Oh, he got him with a bottle. After that uber advantage, he came back in with a bottle and melee down Muki. Uh, so we're going to see Metwe. He's back up right now with a 20% uber advantage. Of course, it does get a nice pick onto Hildreth to defend this lap. Sorry about that, go ahead. That's fine. I mean, what did I say? It's payload last. This is where you're going to get the majority of your time. Um, and High Panda maybe have to start thinking about different routes to go through instead of this forward stairs, something a bit different. But, I mean, this is really... In. Look at Banny. Look how far forward Banny is and Zan. They're just really, really aggressive. And Muma, and this is what I'm talking about. I was going to mention earlier, that's <laughs> Greshikov stands on Metawi's head. Uh, doesn't take him down, but did take down Carl uh, in the time being. And it is a spy battle which Grenjabob essentially wins as Akuma has to dead ring away. Um, but, I don't know, DK seems to be just throwing players aggressively and losing them when they're defending, when they don't really need to. I mean, there's no pressure, they just need to wait for people to come to them, if you see what I mean. And yeah, Uber yeah. and Banning seem to just be walking forward with that W key. As the, excuse me, the Uber comes out from DK and Mookie's going to have it any second now. And they all are in new flank and they are going to take down Carl, but they've lost so many players in the time being. This is not looking good for Highbander. Yeah, since the, the red spawn you essentially spawn in on last, um, some players' lives are a little recyclable, and it uh, looks like DK is taking that to their advantage, trying to send them out, trying to get a couple of cheeky picks over here, over there. Um, Banny is playing extremely aggressive. He actually just ran out and ran into a heavy and just died. I'm not quite sure what he was thinking there, but uh, Metaweed's Uber did get popped a little bit early. I don't know what they were trying to use it on. Um, and then they cleaned up a couple of frags. And Mookie actually, it looks like, I think he got forced uh, out in the left flank, so his uber was pretty much nullified as well. Um, Mookie does have about uh, nowhere near any other advantage at all. Uh, both teams are going to be at 100% here in a couple seconds. Uh, we're going to probably see when Hildreth three spawns, we're going to see High Pander probably take a nice push in here. Uh, we have Gorsa actually trying to go in for a suicide without reserve shooter, but Medui is currently hiding in the corner behind his heavy, so uh, Medui is safe and sound. Seems to be something slightly wrong with the spawn times. Um, seems the attacking team have got 20 second respawn times, while the defending team only has about 6 seconds. Um, so I think maybe that's the wrong way around. Um, oh, that's really? That's something that the, uh, yeah, the map makers I think are, are going to look into it. Uh, it seems to be a bit of an issue, but... Um, as Hildreth goes down very late there, and yeah, he's going to be in the respawn queue for 20 seconds now. But Astis is doing so much work behind the scenes. Takes down Banny again. He's on a 7 kill streak, and he just seems to be cleaning up those players. You know, like me, I like Banny, who are walking forward trying to get those picks. Um, and he's just running around doing his thing. As uh, both teams, once again, are 100%, just waiting for that pick maybe to move forward. They asked an 8 kill streak now. Um, although that one doesn't really count, it's just a dead ring from Akuma. They do have Corsa here standing on this uh, this little plank of wood and he does get body shot from Tracker which launches him off the planks and uh, that's the signal for Zoob to come in, gets a rocket onto Muma um, and doesn't manage to take down the medic though and so many players dying in the process just for that force and it didn't come to fruition and uh, High Panda have to back off here as, they, uh, as they've lost too many players to put up a decent hold. Yeah, it looked like Hildreth wanted to go in right there uh, but Muma stopped 
the uh, Mookie from going, uh, following up behind him and putting the Uber Beam on him. Uh, he actually walked right into the entire enemy team and hit a whole bunch of really good damage stickies, but uh, he got dropped after he pushed in there. But we're going to see both teams do have 100% Uber charge. Uh, there's a couple of players down for each team, not too important though. Uh, Hypander is, looks like they're trying to go lockers. They're uh, getting a little bit of spam over there from Hildra. Uh, not much going on. Uh, we do still have Jordan on minis, so that's going to open up a little bit of room for Hypander to try to push. Uh, looks like they are going lockers. DK knows it. We, of course, are looking over here. They're going to try to send Tracker to uh, get a little bit of SBS in there, although. Moomer does go down to Gorson after that bomb. Tracker is very hurt. He needs to get healed before he can peek. Uh, actually, Tracker goes down to Banny. I don't know how Banny got up behind him, but I think I saw Tracker go lockers, but DK is just holding this upper area, and uh, of course it continues to click on people's heads. I mean, I'd really like to see in those situations where, you know, Banny and Moomer are getting forward, and they do something as the Uber does come in through main this time, uh, but too many players from Highpander have died. And the pyro here, Satan, is just going to air blast them into the danger. And uh, both Muki and Kunai are going to die. Uh, with only two players left alive for High Panda. Um, Akuma, they're getting the headshot onto Bubble Bobbler just to finish up that. I mean, I mean yeah, I mean, I'd like to see when Moomer and um, Banny get forward and they get those kind of get aggressive, like he's done here. And he's, he's done some damage, he's forced them back, but he's he's died. And for High Panda to exploit that space that's opened up, I mean, there's four different ways to get into this last point. You've got the new flank, you've got the front stairs, you've got main, you've got lockers. Surely with two players down you can exploit that, get your sniper in somewhere, get your scout, get your soldier, someone, something like that, rather than just barreling in. As Moomer's in behind, gets a rocket onto Mookie, but doesn't go down. But Zam has got really aggressive here in the main, that pipe. Now, no, the second pipe lands onto Mookie, using that locker load, and takes down High Panda's medic. With only four players left alive and under 60 seconds to go, Mario. This is not looking good. No, it's not. Uh, Kuma coming in with that 102, cleaning up people. He want a full kill streak right now, the ambassador. He just took down Tracker. So we're going to see a full wipe on High Panda. We're going to have to wait that glitched 20 seconds to get some of their players back in. Uh, Actually, it's only going to be about a couple more, so actually their engineer goes down, so they're going to be about three people down for this push. Um, but we does have a 75% uber advantage, and we're going to see Gorson come in here, try to use that reserve shooter, see if he can get a nice little pick. Uh, but we have Moomin and Banny pushing out, trying to get a pick onto Mookie, uh, but he's going to live through that, uh, through that bomb. we got 15 seconds left, so I don't think even with time 3 they're going to be able to cap this card. But we have Gorson going in, pushing the card, being a team player. Uh, we have Satan coming in with that reserve shooter again. Setting <laughs> everybody up off the coast. I think the reserve shooter is the one that's getting uh, the most hate. You did see a little bit of flog action earlier. As that is a white, um, using that uber advantage there, DK, just to walk forward. And I have to say, you know, I'm, I'm going to throw it out there. I'm going to be biased. I think High Panda would have won that if it wasn't for the fact uh, you know, the spawn times are a little bit different. Maybe that was why uh, DK got their spawns up so quickly yeah, uh, that on that last push. That they had. Yeah. So maybe that came into play, and hopefully, you know, maybe we'll see that rectified for the next map. Or not, we're not. We'll see, but we'll. DK are going to be playing it to the same uh, conditions, so they'll be under the same disadvantages and advantages that High Panda were just on. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see if High Panda can hold. We've got to hold up the first three points for four minutes and nine seconds, uh, or they need to hold um, before that. They need to hold one of the earlier points. So just to remind everyone, this is the EU versus NA show match. It's High Panda and DK. Just going over some new maps, thanks to the likes of Fubar and Bubble Bobbler. This is Barn Blitz. Earlier on we had Vanguard, which we'll be seeing again later. Don't forget that you can donate to both of the leagues that these teams are from, ETF2L and UGC. If you just scroll down in the stream, check out the links below. And also you can donate for some caster t-shirts uh, for the likes of Dashna and uh, help support EVL. As we have got an underway, DK in the blue. And in the red is High Panda, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see how the suicides come out this time, Mario. It'll be interesting to see what the Americans uh, decide to do. If it's a different or similar to how how we do it. Yeah, I want to see some Beggar Bazooka action in here. Um, for the nerf, it used to be one of the best rocket launchers, probably in Highlander, with uh, being able to load three rockets and jump all the way across the map anytime you feel like, and just bomb with three full damage rockets. But recently, since it's nerfed, it's not as good. Um, but real quick. 
Uh, I'm gonna have to do another little shameless plug. We also have uh, the games up available for bet per round over on saloon.tf, and at the end of this map, we are gonna be having an interview with Bubble Bobber, so stick around for that. Uh, we have Jordan running the reserve, uh, sorry, not the reserve shooter, the, uh, what was that engineer weapon? Short you, like, circuit. The, yeah, the short circuit. I totally forgot the name. Uh, he's running the short circuit, uh, trying to push the cart as far as he can. Uh, it looks like Highpander is going to clean up some of those players in the cart and stop it right outside the building. Uh, we have the level 3 in the uh, regular European spot. It's new to me. It looks like it's very effective though. So uh, We have Tracker getting a nice pick onto Banny. Uh, Grenjabob gets a nice pick on saving with that backstab. And uh, of course it cleans him up quite nicely. Uh, but we see the DK Uber come out right here, they're gonna exchange, and uh, the High Panda Uber is used in retaliation. Uh, on their scout, so he's gonna run out, uh, Ash trying to get a couple uh, frags while he's invulnerable, see what he can get done. Uh, Vanny getting a little bit aggressive, just running into people's faces, but he gets cleaned up uh, by Ast. Yeah, Ast is just going huge at the moment, he's staying alive at the right times. And uh, he's there to get the cleanup kills as Satan gets the reflake kill onto Zoob. Uh, he's not gonna be too happy about that as Mookie oh, gets so weak. Launched off that he's at 50%. Um, and that was a decent Uber from, from DK, and I, I like the repush as well. Grenchbop on the card, just coming in backstabs, Banny, it's going to slow the car down. Um, but I do think Hypander have decided, elected to get out of here now, um, maybe just concentrate on the second point, get a little bit more time. As Mookie did go down there, I missed that. Um, I think it was from Muma, but uh, yes, he's going to have a huge Uber advantage from Metawi coming into the second point. If DK can take advantage of this, um, the second and the third points are very, very close together now. If they could roll this into two points, then uh, Highlander could be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, Bubble Bobber was trying to back up right there. He actually picked up his sentry gun and got killed by uh, some type of lock and load spam, I think, across the map while carrying a sentry gun. So he has to manually build level three onto the second point right here. But it looks like he's probably going to be able to get it, although Zan is getting a little bit aggressive. DK uses their Uber to push through the second point. Uh, Hypander does retreat, but it looks like Bubble Bobber wants to stay and defend this. Uh, he has a little bit of help from his Pyro Borsten trying to uh, push back the Uber, and he is going to try to rebuild right here. Um, DK is pushing the cart. Uh, they only have about time one in here, so I want to do a little bit more on that, try to get through as fast as they can. Uh, but it looks like they're just going to bully out. Oh, oh! Muma! Muma takes down Mookie, who's at 99%. Oh, Muma just jumped in from main. I, I heard it. I heard that drop. Oh, was it a drop? Oh. Yeah, it sounded like a drop. Oh dear. I mean, he jumped in from main. Uh, he took down Bubble Bobbler and then finished off the sentry. And he was obviously behind. And Mookie was just desperately trying to get that 100% so that he could re-push uh, with the rest of his team. And uh, I thought in that respect, High Panda were doing okay. Big jump in from Zoom onto the car. Gets a oh, lot of damage. Bob, and that's a nice up. backstab. Yeah, I told you, this this guy gets a lot of uh, gets a lot of med picks, and Carl's the only one left alive. He gets body shot there. He had 50 HP, and that was all he needed to get body shot there by Tracker. Um, with 20 seconds left on the clock, it looks like High Panda are going to just solidify themselves a little bit here, so they can remain in this game. DK capture the third point in the next 10 seconds. Uh, they would have finished the game out right. Big jumping from Muma. He gets two rockets, three rockets. He can't be allowed to do that to get that many rockets onto your medic. Um, Medic down again for High Panda, but Metaway is so weak. He's down to 3 HP. Somehow he survives, takes a sandwich, and uh, he's okay. And it looks like DK are going to capture this third point again. Um, I'm sorry for the first time. And High Panda having to back off, and they're going to have to do what DK did. And uh, if they hold on to this last point till the round timer ends, they will win this round. But they've got 8 minutes and 45 seconds to do it, and an Uber a disadvantage to, uh, to bring into play. I was actually on Mooski's cam right there, and uh, I, I saw Muma coming in. I, I don't even know where he came from, but Mooski just died. Like but that was an amazing, uh, amazing shot. Nice rockets coming in from Muma. Uh, but let's see. Uh, High Pander is uh, pushed back to last of the game. Is actually in the start now. Um, both oh, teams... headshot from Tracker. Sorry to interrupt, but Meta we got two swords there to get 50%, uh, and then gets headshot by, by Tracker. Maybe that's going to be the saving grace here. Um, to, uh, to slow down DK's push. Yeah, uh, Mookie is actually at a 100% uber advantage right here, so probably gonna see maybe uh, a def an offensive defensive uber. Maybe push out, try to get uh, a nice pick onto Medowee and see if they can't keep their uber advantage going. Um, or if they're just gonna use it and hold and turtle. Uh, we have Akuma in the back using that ambassador, trying to do a little bit of work. 
Uh, Tracker cleans him up quickly though with a body shot and a little bit of help from his engineer. Uh, we have High Panda just holding the, the regular spot where DK was holding last round. It looks to be working. Uh, Bubble Wobbler is on minis though, so we don't have the level 3. Uh, but he does have the mini over on the uh, the left flank. Uh, but Zan cleans it up quickly with that sticky bomb. Uh, Corso is trying to peek up that upper little main staircase. Uh, Carl trying to take a 1v1, but it looks like he's going to get cleaned up easy uh, by the uh, High Pander Heavy. Corso getting a little bit aggressive, seeing if he can get a cheeky pick. Uh, but it looks like he's going to get cleaned up by Zub, and Zan also gets picked by Zub. Yeah, earlier on there, Ass there, using his pistol, gunned down Meta in, you know, bringing in these spawn conditions. Uh, when you bring to have that in mind, you've got to think that every time you lose your med on offense, it is actually kind of a big deal as Kuma manages to sneak past and towards the spawn area. 100% still in the bank for Mookie. He's had that for a while now, but he doesn't need to get aggressive. And this is what I was talking about. You look at you look at Zub, you look at Ass, they're playing within the realms of their defense. They're just peeking, they're not getting too aggressive, um, which is kind of different to how uh, DK were playing it, who were you know, just getting really, really aggressive and just losing their flank. Um, High Panda playing it a lot more safe. Uh, Corsa wins the sniper battle though. Vanny's just bonking in through the top, just has a look, has a cheeky peek and gets some ideas. The new flank is really wide open here. So many players going down for High Panda. Uh, Grenchwell does take down Metsui though. I'm not sure if that was a drop, man. I'm not sure if you caught that. Um, but the medic does go down for DK once again. Uh, no, I don't believe it was a drop, but actually, uh, my word of the day was cheeky. That's the only reason I've said it twice. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very British thing to say, uh, I can understand that, but it's used now by Mookie um, and uh, he's going to actually still have an advantage as Messi's just spawning now um, and DK are bleeding players, that reserve shooter comes into play with some pyro on pyro action Gorston taking down Satan and everyone else just getting cleaned up um, Corsa here quite far forward trying to see Azub just having a jump around, didn't see the teleporter which may be key, he's going to get those respawns up to the front lines a lot quicker um, and maybe if Zub had caught that, he could have destroyed it. Um, but High Panda are still none the wiser. But you have double the advantage. They've got 70%. Uh, 40. Oh no! The Grinch down! The takes down Metui. I told you this kid gets medics. He cannot oh do goodness. any. He just kills medics. That is his job, plain and simple, Mario. And that's just going to give Muki 100% advantage once again. Yeah, High Panda putting up good defense here. Uh, they have their soldier over in lockers, definitely trying to pressure out what he can. Saw Mumu over there, seeing uh, if he could play, get any type of uh, type of pick from that locker room, but he got cleaned up quickly from Zub. Uh, Zub actually gets a nice pick onto Carl, and he's going to pressure out. He's going to pressure out Corsa, not going to pick you free up there. So Zub doing a good job on the flank for High Pander. Uh, they do have all of their players up, and Luki is a, a 75 stern Uber, but Zub coming in. Oh, Zub doing so much work from that locker room. It's a nice bomb, on, uh, bomb onto Medowi, so Medowi is going to go down for another 14 seconds. Well, Mookie does have a 100% uber charge. Uh, we have Grandjabob going in, trying to get a pick onto Corsa with the revolver. It's a nice uh, nice kill, so going to clean up some sight lines and see, uh, see what other picks he can get here while he's still alive in the back. Yeah, lots of players just, you know, bleeding out of sync here. Um, not good for DK, and it's starting to get to that time. I mean, when you've pushed third point, you have 100% uber, the other team doesn't have uber, and you're thinking, hey, I've got 9 minutes to push last, I mean, this is easy. And then, you know, the more your medic goes down, the more you start, you know, failing pushes, and the more you start dropping ubers, uh, you start to, you know, you start to get a little bit sweaty, you start getting a little bit tight, you think, hmm, we got 5 minutes now, you know, that's half the time we had earlier, and, yeah, only just now are people realising uh, yeah, that the spawns are... <laughs> starting to realize that the spawns are broken as Froyo, Bani and DK Carl both die here and uh, the Uber is ready for Muki but Meto is only at 80% so he's being rather rather dangerous here um, walking forward and trying to peek with uh, his demo Zan and I mean it's, it's all about pushing in from a different place I and mean, we haven't seen a push from DK in quite a while his Meto has died uh, too many times uh, for that to be uh, something for them to actually do, but maybe a push from lockers or from new flank, something like that. They did try new flank earlier, it didn't really work out for them. I mean, it's kind of, it's variety, it's, it's springing a surprise on you know, the enemy team. Something to do like that as DK is up on 1 HP. Carl there gets taken down by Ass, who just seems to be doing so much work on the cleanup at the moment. Yeah, I was taking a look at that locker room earlier. It looks like the drop down got a little bit of changed. Uh, I feel like the door is a little bit smaller from what it used to be, and uh, you can't flood players in there as much as you used to be able to. 
uh, with that smaller doorway, but Grenjabov gets a nice pick onto Jordan, and uh, the DK push looks like they are going to bleed players and not be able to do anything, uh, especially with Zan and Muma down. Both doing a lot of work for their team. Fanny just running around shooting some stickies. I feel like he wants to push the cart, but he also wants to just like go frag everything. And uh, that mini sentry over there on the left side from uh, Bubble Bobbler is definitely preventing him with that area denial. He's going to have to back up, but it looks like he is protecting Corsa. Corsa trying to get any type of picks that he can. But uh, Tracker seems like he knows that he's there. I can see the uh, little blue dot. And, uh, oh, Grandjumov with another pick on Medui, another backstab. Medui going down with a 100% uber. Uh, Nuki does still have his, and uh, we're going to see Hypanner hold out here for another at least a minute before there's a, a Medui respawn and a Medui uber built. Um, yeah, plus two in there. Cheeky plus two from Grandjumov. He knows <laughs> it was a drop. I mean, I play, I play against Hypanner a lot. I know what it's like. As a medic, to have to constantly be checking your back against Grenjabob. Um, it is a constant threat. But Zub and Tracker, they're going down. Um, but they are going to respawn. But Moom is in. He lands a rocket, but can't get any more. And Muki just falls back to the safety of that dispenser um, to try and stay alive. But the headshots are ringing out from Corsa. He's in that choke. Gets pushed out. We do have a, an, another issue, uh, Mario. Um, it says 1 minute and 26 seconds on the map time. Which is actually over a minute less than the. Uh, oh no! Than I mean the server time. The server time. So someone needs to change the server time to make this game last longer. Otherwise, we're gonna we're gonna be CP cut about underscore map limit zero. Yes, I mean nobody is online. That is the problem. The casters and the players. Everyone is offline um, through threats of uh, of any issues. So I'm not sure unless someone spots it in game. There is not much we can do with it. At the moment, as the Uber is actually forced onto Muki. A uh, great play there, once again by Muma. Um, and they do get a couple of picks in the process, including the NG Bubble Wobbler. And maybe this is the time for Metui to use his Uber. He does through the front stairs. They do clean up a lot of players. Um, High Panther have lost, but Tracker there, dominating Carl, takes him down with a headshot. And another headshot takes down Zan. Maybe that is just going to be enough to stop this push and uh, make High Panther give them a little bit more space to rebuild their defenses. Yeah, even if the uh, the map limit wasn't going to be a thing, there'd probably only be one more time for DK to, uh, to give that a push, but I feel like uh, Hype Hunter is going to win this even if uh, the map limit wasn't broken. Uh, some teams are complaining about <laughs> the spawn times being uh, flip-flopped, and it looks like it probably played a huge factor into into the last on this, not being able to push, because I mean, that double, uh, double respawn time is definitely devastating. And uh, half the time... The only reason you win pushing last is because the enemy team is dead and just can't respawn, so being able to respawn twice as fast as you is definitely uh, playing playing the factor here, trying to push last. Um, but it looks like the map time didn't cancel, so we are going to get this last extra minute. Uh, Mookie does have a 100% Uber. Uh, oh, he dropped only it! At... He's dropped it! Oh my word, all he had to do was right click and his team was safe and Metamus used his Uber and DK are all over this last point now. The respawns need to come in from High Panda quickly, otherwise they're in huge trouble. His Zoom is going to be a key player who's spamming that car and he's getting decent damage and oh, he manages to clean up. Hildreth comes in with the 3k, cleans up with those stickies and I think High Panda are going to hold on to it. With 30 seconds left to go, it is still all uh, in the air. As Banny comes in onto the medic and gets taken down by Ast. Seems to be winning the scout battle at the moment. Um, that was close. <laughs> what did uh, what did Metui really drop to? Let, let me guess, let me guess. Reserve shooter? Question mark? No, I mean, no, Metui didn't drop it. It was Mookie who dropped. Um, oh, and I yeah. Think, I'm not sure what he dropped to. I think it was just... I thought it was Mookie. We could say, yeah, I mean, it's Reserve Shooter. Ban that weapon. It's, Ban it. It's, it's all good. good. <laughs> But that does mean that High Panda have successfully defended that last point. And uh, it does mean, due to the fact that they captured the first three points quicker than DK, that High Panda have won this round of Barn Blitz. So for anyone keeping score, it is 1-1 at the moment. Um, and we'll see how... We're going to be playing Barn Blitz again, but this time on a, an American server, Mario. Do you think that's going to play much of a difference? Um... I, I don't I don't really think so. I think right now the only thing that is gonna make a difference is if the spawn timers get fixed or not. Um I, I really don't think that the server switch is gonna do much. Um 
I think both teams will probably play about even, even with the ping differences. Uh, I, I don't really see it. No, not really. Uh, but it looks like we are going to have an interview with Bubble Bobbler soon. Um, and the next map will be... Actually, no, it's going to be Vanguard next on an NA server. So Barnblitz is going to be coming up after the next Vanguard map. So we're going to see Vanguard again. Uh, and it's going to be first team to five with the NA set of uh, win conditions or uh, the highest points after 30 minutes total. Yeah, so on the American servers, we'll be playing by uh, UGC rules, um, which I suppose makes sense. It gives everyone a bit of a sense of a kind of a home advantage. We'll be seeing if High Panda can do a little bit better than they did last time uh, on Vanguard. And yeah, we'll be talking, I, I believe, to Fubar and to Bubble Bobbler, who are the, the creators of these maps. I mean, to, to just talk about while we're waiting, uh, for these guys to join us in Mumble about the map. Um, obviously in Europe we've we've played Barn Blitz for the past few seasons, you know, there are people who dislike it, there are people who like it. I mean, from your point of view, can you see this map in these kind of conditions, in these sort of, with all of these updates, with these new routes and uh, flank areas, uh, would you be happy to be playing this in UGC in the, in the coming seasons? Um, I'm not a big fan of Vanguard, and Unless they fix the respawn timer, which uh, I'm sure they will. Um, Barn Boots didn't actually seem that bad. Uh, I, I know it's been it, it's not been fun to play in the past, but with the additional flanks, um, I'd be happy to give it a go. Uh, but I've been told that they are going to try to get the spawn timers fixed for the fourth map. Uh, so the next time we play Barn Boots on the NA server, hopefully those spawn issues get fixed and we have a much better, more fair game. Um, but I'm looking forward to the uh, to the Vanguard match more than anything. Uh, hopefully, some of the 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 ping and uh, and the disconnects and and the freezes and the pauses get uh, get resolved, and we get a nice even match on that map. Because uh, first time, I don't really think it was fair. It wasn't really much of a game. Uh, so what you're but... saying is we should just forget about that, and technically, Europe is winning one nil. I mean, that's what I understand what you're saying, right? Europe is winning one nil. Yeah, I mean, if we're not, if we're going to pretend the first Vanguard didn't happen. Uh, well, did, then... did, didn't 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 win Vanguard? Yeah, but you're saying it shouldn't count because you know, it's all uh, <laughs> all of the issues. <laughs> you know what? Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. Okay, you guys are one one <laughs> No, I agree. You. I mean, it, I think uh, it's it was very difficult to kind of judge the map when it was, you know, at one point I believe we were actually four v four. You know, you know, when DK went on to I think it was about three now. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how the map plays out nine v nine. Everyone, you know playing to the best of their abilities, no one dropping and stuff like that. Um, it be interesting to see, kind of, I agree with what you said about Granary, but I believe there are more sight lines. Like with Granary, you've got the crates and things like that, um, you know, that kind of block those sniper sight lines. And as we know, sniper is a huge thing in Highlander. It'll be interesting to see how that plays across the mid fight because it seemed Corsa had Tracker's number for those first few mid fights. And then later on, Tracker started to maybe see the sight lines and think, okay, this is where I should be standing. Um, and it's, it, proved quite even in the last couple of rounds. As we are joined by Fubar now, um, welcome to the Mumble, and how are you enjoying the uh, the game so far? Uh, it's been that bad so far. Vanguard played better than I expected. Um, it used to be that uh, the mid would be really sniper focused, now it's just really aggressive and fast. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the teams not being used to it or what. But yeah, that, that was good. I mean, yeah, I, talking about five CP maps, so me and Mary were talking about it earlier. It was um, one of the, the the things we didn't like was the fact you get quite a lot of stalemates, but that certainly wasn't the case here. Was that kind of something you tried to design um, to enable that kind of fast, faster paced action? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the goal from day one was to move away from uh, a Uber play and more into positioning and uh, aggression. So yeah, maybe maybe it helped the the US team because it's more of the American style. I saw on last on Vanguard you took away uh, you took away that ramp leading up in into that window room. Uh, what was your decision yeah. behind that? Um, one of the problem that we had with the lobby is that the lobby was not safe for uh, the attacking team. So um, what happened it was uh, the, the defending team would push in the lobby through there. And we we wanted to remove that. Yeah, okay. I can I can see that. Um, 
in your own personal opinion, like what what's your favorite thing about Vanguard? Do do you have like a favorite uh favorite thing that you put into it? What what do, what do you like best about the map? Wow. Well, uh, the the cool thing about being a mapper is you just get to make the map you want to play. So I just like all of it, but because that's like my personal preference. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I really like the mid. Yeah, I, like, I, like, I like everything about it, except maybe last last needs some work, yeah. But uh, second and mid, I, I really like them, and the transition is, is good in my opinion. I like that tower that you have on uh, on the second point. It's like the big one that you can climb up on. Yeah. Um, the, the vertical play is pretty cool on there. I haven't really seen anybody take advantage of it, but I know it's there and it looks pretty interesting. Yeah, and it, it kind of happened by accident. Oh, uh, did? Yeah, sort of. Uh, second is weird. I just add so many versions uh, of this point. It's ridiculous. Uh, I probably tried out like dozens of second points, and that one was the one I sticked with. Uh, if you could change one thing right now about Vanguard, do you think? Uh, what do you think you would change? Do you have any ideas uh, for the next version of the map, or are you done editing it? Um, I'm going to see how this one plays. Uh, first, uh, so far I think it's been fine, but I don't really have enough data to make uh, a call on that. So I- I'm definitely going to wait to see how it plays. Uh, if if mid is less passive than it was, then that's go- definitely go- being going to be the way we- the way forward. Sorry, but uh, yeah, if-, if last point works out, uh, I'm pretty much going to call it. Okay. Um, if anybody in chat has any questions, I'm currently looking to see. Uh, hopefully the yeah, delay sure. isn't too long. Um, did Vanguard got put into Valve official map just a little bit? Yeah, ago, yeah. Oh, well. That how, happens how's, how's so that? fast. Does, uh, does Valve send you any... You were talking about data earlier. Do they send you any info and uh, any type of numbers, statistics? What do they got? No, they don't really do that anymore. Uh, I think they used to, but nowadays it's just uh, if they see that the map does well on the workshop and that the community is ready to support it, uh, they'll just add it in. That's kind of the way they are going for these days. But uh, yeah, it, it just it, it happened really fast. Uh, the UGC season ended, and like a couple of weeks later, I got a mail from Valve, and uh, that was it. The, the map was going in. It's pretty cool, man. Uh, I haven't had anything put into an official video game. Uh, uh, I got it's one question. So great. I got one question from Nightmare F. Although I did already ask you this, he says, "How did the tower become?" Uh, I think I already mm-hmm. asked you that, though. Mm-hmm. Still looking um, there. Doesn't, doesn't seem to be any other actual questions other than some awesome spam. Oh yeah, Twitch chat. Uh, <laughs> Some, but, someone yeah. says, how much money did you get from Valve? I mean, <laughs> I am not allowed to discuss this. Uh, so it, we're talking it, like five, six figures, yeah? Uh, right now, it's five figures. But wow. uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, I, I didn't have a job, neither. So that, that came in just at the right time. So right now, I'm kind of uh, full-time on mapping from Team Fortress. It's really great. Uh, how do you feel about Lay Toucan? Dashner wants to know. What what's that? Lay Toucan has arrived. Yeah. Oh shit! Oh, the Toucan has arrived. <laughs> the Toucan. <laughs> Look, uh, I, I'm all for ASCII Heart. It's the best. Uh, you get a lot of those on the workshop. Uh, um, I was going to ask something about the last point. Um, we saw quite a lot that. Uh, DK were just sort of sending players in just to capture the point because it seems there's quite a lot of areas that mm-hmm. wasn't being watched. I mean, was that something you felt um, like when you were designing last point? Did you think, oh, this this point's going to be really easy to back cap, or you know, was it a bit of a surprise to see that happen? Um, well, there used to be uh, only two ways into the last point, so it it was it used to be really easy to defend. Um, but now with the with the third way through the the, the sewers or whatever it is uh, the underground passage, 
uh, you really have to watch a lot of stuff at the same time, so I'm wondering if it's not overwhelming. I got a question from Salty Prince US. He says, will the official map change if you make any edits? Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah. When the map was added, I told Valve, look, I'm in the middle of changes uh, because the UGC season had just ended. So I was working on a lot of stuff. And uh, I told them that I had a, a lot of changes that I was not comfortable sending them because I hadn't not tested them yet. So what I'm looking to do now is really get some changes done. Uh, test them, and when I'm comfortable to send them to Valve, I will, and they will update the map, no problem. Oh, that's awesome, man. And uh, you also worked on, on the Barn Blitz, didn't you? Yeah. What, uh, yes, what's, going on, what's going on with the, with the spawn timers? What happened, yeah, man? sorry, that's what you get when you work late on maps. <laughs> how, did, how did you <laughs> manage yeah, to do that? <laughs> basically, uh, the, the spawn times got inverted for uh, the last point. That's basically what happened. Uh, Barn Blitz, Barn Blitz is kind of a messy map to work with, and we had to redo pretty much all of the the game logic uh, for this version because it was just a mess. And now, adding new spawn doors and everything, we just had to uh, redo everything. And well, I had to mess it up somewhere. It it was going to happen no matter what. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah. He gave uh, us a talking point. If you didn't mess up, then you know we wouldn't have had something to talk about, would we? Yeah. Exactly. Well, I'm working on a uh, on a new version now. I saw some I'll of those extra flanks that you had in there. Uh, how 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 much like extra stuff did you add? Do you have any idea like how much stuff you changed? Uh, it, we changed a bunch of things, and so much of it is such little details that you can't even tell. But like it. These little details really add up, and it really makes the map better overall. But yeah, the, the big changes are really uh, the the new the new flank, as they were calling it. Yeah, there's a couple new spawn doors over there too. Uh, yeah, like the, the yeah. multi door spawn that looked pretty cool. I haven't seen that. Yeah, we, we we removed all the red forward spawns, so that's that's a huge uh, huge change right there. It's going to what was change... kind of your your thoughts behind like changing the spawns? Like, was there a decision behind that? Yeah, well, the the spawns were pretty much broken. Uh, <laughs> most of it, the 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 first forward spawn for for red uh, as a side door, and when hay gets capped, the the first door gets locked, and then you can get out the other door, but if you're in that door, when it gets capped, the door gets locked, and it's just broken and janky because Valve did. Uh, I don't want to say a terrible job because uh, I don't want to uh, g give a bad rep to my uh, my peers. But uh, yeah, a lot of the logic was really messy, and we just had to fix everything. And just removing the spawns took a lot of. Uh, a lot of work uh, out of the equation. What program do you guys use to, to edit that stuff? It's Hammer, isn't it? Correct yeah, we wrong. use Hammer. A uh, good old program from the 90s. Do you, guys ever use, great. Um, do, you, do you guys use any other programs? Or is it, is it just all in Hammer? Uh, it's pretty much all Hammer. Uh, if you want to make textures and 3D models, though, you have to go in other programs for that. Uh, we have a 3D couple studio other, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. Photoshop for textures and such. But, we do actually have yeah. a question about um, it's from Raptor. Uh, did you show Barn Blitz Pro to Valve, and does Valve know about it? Do they know about it? Well, um, I just uploaded it on the workshop, so that's pretty much how Valve works now. They don't really look at map. They don't actively look for maps. They, they just check what's uh, what's popular on the workshop, and if a map is successful on there, they will consider adding it. But that that's just how it goes these days. So what you're saying is, if we you know we get some support for the map in the workshop, oh then, for sure, yeah, it's going to get some attention from Valve. That's good. If you want it for matchmaking, go on there and uh, hit subscribe, uh, up, upvote the map. Same for Viaduct. Hint, hint. Oh, oh! Did you work on product? Yeah, that's me and Bubbles as well. Oh, awesome! Uh, 
did did you change it again since uh since the last version? No, no, it's still uh it's still the same. Uh, RCA we have a... or or whatever it's on. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we have a couple changes listed that we want to make, but they are not big changes, and they don't really justify a new version yet. So we're kind of we're, we're kind of holding off on that. Do you have any plans to change uh, like the rock at all? I know the rock is it's a staple to that map, but it causes yeah. nightmares. Yeah, we, we've had so many tweaks on that rock, and it's still not good. Uh, you should just <laughs> take it out, sure. man. Just just take it out. Just take it out. You don't need it. Uh, maybe. I don't know. We'll try to figure something out. Got a question from Anubis101. Why did you change the name from Viaduct, from Pro underscore Viaduct to Product? Uh, it's just shorter, so it's more simple for server operators. It's uh, easier to type, so that's one of the reasons why we went for it. But also, um, the Halloween version of Viaduct is called Iaduct. So you have uh, Viaduct, Iaduct, and now Product. So it's just uh, a lame pun. Ah, uh, I got it. Yeah. That's good. A uh, question from Nightmare. He's asked, um, are we going to see all the stock maps in Pro? I guess that could be expanded to, are there any other maps you have in mind to develop Pro versions of? Mm -hmm. So um, the thing with Pro maps, uh, if you've watched uh, Benny streams at all. Uh, he's talked about how Valve doesn't want to add pro maps, but they are open to updating uh, current maps. So uh, maybe there's a hope that we can work out something with Valve uh, and reach a compromise between the pro version and the current version. So we we are hopeful that. Uh, that's going to happen because uh, Valve is open to updating the map, but they have, uh, especially on Viaduct, there's so much stuff to catch up on that uh, it's it might be too little too late, I guess. So I, I'm not sure how that's going to play out, but... How long so you've got usually... stuff in mind. My... Sorry, Cam. How long does it uh, like take for you to make a map like how long does it take for you to like make a change? Like, do you just go in there and do it in a couple minutes, or does it take a few hours? Uh, it always depends. Uh, if it's Barton Billets, uh, then the editor gets really laggy because it's a huge map and it's just a mess to work with. So that can take a while. And then uh, you have to add a couple hours to compile the map and release it. Um, it's depending on the changes. It can be really fast, or it can be uh, it can take a full day, uh, even for small changes. Do you have something on CJ? Um, I'm scanning, but I can't see any. Uh... Oh, someone Good asked chat. Tom TF2 here. Says, uh, "What's your favorite class, Vivar?" What's my favorite class? Um, I don't know. I don't play this game. <laughs> I'm a mapper. I don't do these things. So you, um, don't have a, you don't have a specific class in mind when you're designing? Uh, seriously, though. Um, I used to play a lot of Scout, and I still have a soft spot for, for Scout, definitely. But I've been playing a lot more Soldier recently, and, um, ah, you know, the, the occasional of classing and stuff. Have you ever considered just... Uh... Blocking every sniper sideline so snipers just don't have any fun. Um, no, not really. Uh, I, I prefer to to uh, yeah. I don't I don't really mind the snipers. I think they should be viable uh, because it, it makes things up. Uh, of course, it does needs to not be overpowered, but uh, generally, I I think I I tend to be more harsh harsh on. Uh, on heavies. I don't like heavies. <laughs> That's just how it goes. Uh, if I have to make a special path or something, I just, I'll just i just make sure that the heavy can't make a jump or something. Yeah, uh, real quick, <laughs> we are in an interview with the uh, map maker of uh, CP Vanguard and Payload Barn Blitz Fubar. Um, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the chat and uh, we'll read them out to him. We have uh, M. Steves 
says, did, uh, do you make any map balance changes yourself, or do you just ask comp players for suggestions? Um, it really depends. Uh, usually what I try to do is, um, when, when I'm looking for feedback, I want to spot what are the problems. And if people have suggestions, that's fine. But uh, what I want to do mostly is look at what are the actual problems. And then I can find a solution to that problem that maybe usually people don't think about um, the right solutions. They, they have something in mind. and. I have a suggestion like, yeah, this would fix that, but then you break something else. And every suggestion usually don't work out that well. So you have to be creative and find a way to fix every problem without creating other problems. That's the biggest thing. And that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I'm just looking at the chat. I have I to find correct anything. you there, Mario. That was Emmy Estevez. Short for Emilio Estevez, aka Promelio Estevez, the the best. I guess he's a heavy now. The best heavy in Europe. Okay, I called him. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's fine. There is a there is a question here. Um, why do you love snipers, Fubar? Um, do you consciously have like sniper sightlines in your maps? Do you think, oh, this will be a good one? Not really. I don't love snipers, but I don't mind them. Uh, actually. If you, if you look at Viaduct, Sniper is not that good anymore, so I don't, I don't know that I love Sniper. I just want to make them viable and not overpowered. Pyro Penguin says, uh, Fubar, what is your favorite meme? Oh, shit. Um, I, I like John Cena, but I've gotten tired of it. I have a collection of rare pepes also. <laughs> we are running out of uh, of of questions. I'm going to ask you a question, Fuba. Um, Go for it. Who do you think is going to win this next round of Vanguard? Uh well, um, yeah, map knowledge is is going to be a big factor. So if I had to guess, the the US team will definitely take it. But sh sh big shout outs to the teams. Uh, I just put out new versions of these maps this morning and they're playing it pretty much blind. They've never seen that before. So they're doing it on stream and we're all discovering the map. So it's nice. We got 17 in the server, so we only have a little bit of time left for questions. Uh, I look like uh, I see Raptor 00X says, do you look at casts from your own map and try to figure out why it went into a stalemate? Or why are snipers getting used so much? Uh, I think he wants to know, like, w why are snipers so good at, at what they do? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of sidelines were nerfed, actually. Uh, especially on mid now, it's not, it's not, it's really not too bad. Uh, you used to be able to stand in the middle entrance and be protected by all your team and wait for a pick, and then that's what would determine the mid fight. But uh, the, the new walls, I think, are helping a lot with that. Of course, uh, second still has a lot of sidelines, but I think they are manageable. Um, but yeah, that, that's, what, that's what mapping is. It's, a, it's always a work in progress, and uh, I, I'm always keeping an eye, an, an eye out on, uh, on snipers. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I got a question for you. How, how do you determine when a map is finished? Like, I always feel like there's always okay. something that you can do to a map. Yeah, a, a map is never finished. No matter what anyone tells you, it's never over. Like, I started Vanguard five years ago, and oh I'm, just, I'm never going to see the end of it. <laughs> no map is ever perfect, so you, you can always make it better and stuff. Somebody did ask... Um... You know, how did you get into mapping? I think it was Tom TF2 who asked the question, when did you, you know, get into mapping? You know, how long ago? Yeah. And um, what, was, what was the reason that you got into it? Uh, it, it, was, it was the early days of uh, Team Fortress. And I think I remember about the time when Junction got added. Uh, I was looking at the update and I was like, 
yeah, people are doing this. I can do that. And that's pretty much how I got into it. Uh, yeah, it seems like you've, uh, um, what's the word? You've inspired a few people to, uh, to maybe take up mapping. I mean, what advice would you give to anyone who's maybe looked at this and thinks, you know, I could make a TFT map. What advice would you give them? Don't do it. <laughs> no. uh it's it's uh, mapping is is uh is a love hate thing you you really have to put your heart into it and then get crushed that's just how it works uh be open to feedback uh people don't want to hate on your map but it's probably going to be bad so uh try to figure out why it's bad and improve from there that's that's how it goes. Sounds like fun, man. But uh, thank you for joining us, Fubar. Uh, I think we're about to start the next map. I hear people readying up. Uh, two people just dropped, but I believe that we are live in real time. So we should get the cast here started in a couple of seconds. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us. It was uh, awesome for the interview. I, I hope you had fun. Thanks for having me. Yep, thanks for joining us. Uh, what do you think, CJ? What do I think? Um, ooh, are you gonna go, are you gonna go out and make your own map? I mean, he said five figures, man. That's I, more money I than to, I got. I used to. I've, I've I've been around a while. I used to dabble with Hammer um, a long time ago. Not in TF2, but um, I used to be part of a, a mod, and uh, we did actually convert some of our maps into TF2 to see if they would play. But that's a story for another time. As we're on to a new mid fight, brand new map now, or brand new uh, server, server, I should say, we're on American server playing Vanguard this time under North American rule set, North American ping. As we do see a very laggy bomb in from Muma. Um, there's a lot of lag going on right now. It does look like the Americans have the advantage. A headshot from Akuma takes out Zoom in the middle of the air. Three down for High Panda already and they are deciding this time they're just going to back out and uh, stay with their lives and maybe try to defend us. As Paddy's coming in, he's already in on the medic um, and manages to take down Kunai. But that dead ringer is going to blast him out of the sky. Mario, that's just, a that's just another clip for your anti-reserve shooter. Very um, reserve shooter. Uh, but it looks like High Panda is going to try to push out to their second. Their demo man, uh, Hildred, is peeking a little bit through that door, but he does get headshot by Corsa. And uh, I think Akuma also hit him in the head as well, but uh, High Panda is going to use their uber here. They're pushing out from their last, trying to retake their second. Actually, DK hasn't capped second yet, so they're trying to take the ground. Uh, and push them out with their uber, but Medawi has not been forced and or popped yet, so he does have a 100% uber. Corsa goes down, uh, and Muma is about to respawn, but we should see DK uh, go in for a push here. It looks like Banyan might have disconnected, I'm not quite sure, but he's currently sitting in spawn. Uh, I don't know if they're waiting for him before they push, but they, uh, Medawi actually did use uber, I didn't see that, I'm not sure what happened, but Muki does get out with his life. Uh, he is at 75%. He is very hurt right now. He was just in the spawn room. I don't know why he didn't get health, but uh, Okuma is trying to hit those one or two. But DK coming in, they don't even care. Uh, Muki, 95% uber. Is he going to get it in time? Holding down that right click, drops his soldier. Only an engineer alive right now with him. Uh, he does have Tracker in the back trying to shoot some pot shots, seeing what he can hit. Uh, but Muki does have 100% uber and is currently alive on last. Now you see, if I was, if I was, you know, main calling right now for High Panda, I'd say let's get out, like go, go, go. They're, you know, they're four up, they're three up, and um, we can push forward. But Hildred, in doing so, gets taken down. But As does trade and takes down Zan. So no demo for either team. As continues, takes down Satan. He's walking really far forward. Zoop does a big jump around, but there's nothing for him to jump into. Looks like High Panda are actually going to uh, capture this point. Big jump in. Can he land the air shot? No, he misses it. And Mookie stays alive with 69 HP. Um, big jump in from Muma, uh, but yeah, the uber advantage there from Muki, just scaring them forward, but now it's got force. I don't know what happened there. Uh, Mario, did you see what happened to that force metawing? Uh, I think he got bombed in by, uh, by Zoo, but it looks like he died, so. Uh, then we did uh, get forced to use his uber. It looks like High Panda's gonna take in their scout and heavy, but they're gonna get completely denied by Satan. Uh, shutting out that uber completely with his air blast. So Medawi is currently at a 30% advantage, sitting back on the DK at second, waiting for his gamers to get over here. Carl doing some awesome air denial with that head glitch uh, from the heavy. Kuma hitting some 102s, and I feel like are we at a pause? Is the disconnect or it looks again? like a pause? Yeah. Um, 
I'm not sure if Banny is still in spawn, if you can see. Um, I'm not sure where the spawn even is. No, Seems I like Banny came back. No, he came back. So maybe someone is disconnected. Maybe hopefully it's nothing too major. Um, but yeah, I mean that's it's interesting that you know we haven't seen more of what High Panda just did there. The Ast Uber. I mean, I casted their last game of the regular season. Uh, it's been about a week ago now, and on it was on CP Gullywash, and they basically just ubered Ast non-stop. Uh, they take him in through chokes, and he just gets so many kills, deals so much damage. It's interesting to see both teams not utilizing their scouts more because they are, you know, they are beast scouts. They they have the DM to be able to to do that damage and take the ubers. Um, but that did fail there with Satan just totally denying it with the air blast. So. Um, they kind of wasted that over, which means Metawi is now at 63%, Muki only at 22, uh, 25, sorry. So he does have an advantage, and I think DK are pretty much going to take this for free. Um, because High Panda don't have the players up to really deny it, and we're going to see another last hold. Yeah, Astro now on a 5 kill streak. he's uh, doing a lot of work. Uh, I'd like to see more Ubers, uh, get, uh, have him getting into more Ubers, but I feel like this map, with all the extra flanks and like the map's a little on the large side, he, he, he's usually running off trying to defend his flanks and uh, separated from his combo either he, he's out of position or uh, he's just not getting called back over to get pushed out under the uber. I'm not quite sure uh, what's going on. Uh, but I've been told that EU needs a heavy ringer. Um, forgot how to pronounce her name, I'm very sorry, but uh, Kunai. It uh, looks that's like right. she needs to be replaced, so that's currently what we're waiting for. Oh, I wonder. It'll be interesting to see who they get, whether that changes the dynamic. Um, I mean, I know Hildreth is the main caller of the team, and you know whatever heavy he has playing will just, you know, I suppose, follow follow the trend. And Kunai is a very, very good heavy. She's one of the best heavies Europe probably has to offer. Um, and yeah, she's been playing the past few weeks with High Panda. So you know, once again, another sub there. It's probably not going to be good for the 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 morale of High Panda, constantly having to pause and get somebody else in. Um, one thing I have spotted though is both snipers are bottom of the scoreboard at the moment. I know it's only been uh, a few minutes into the into the game, but I mean the first kills we saw in the mid fights earlier on, on the, you know, the first rendition uh, of these this match, uh, Tracker and Corsa were getting the early kills. Maybe uh, people are just wising up a little bit to the sidelines, and they haven't really had much uh, much luck so far. Yeah, I feel, I feel like uh, both teams have learned a lot since that first game. They're uh, not going the same ways that they were. I think uh, Tracker got a body shot on like a spy or something. It wasn't a very big pick, um, but it looks like both teams are learning. I mean, players at top levels, they're going to adjust, and they're going to learn. They're going to change things that they need to change as fast as they can. You know, that's what makes them... So it makes them the top players, but uh, we're still paused here, which isn't very fun. Um, Metawi does have about a 40% uh, uber advantage rate now, um, so hopefully we'll see DK do some type of a push to come in. Uh, Muki is kind of separated, not really building during this freeze time, uh, obviously, but yeah, he's separated from his team, not really doing much, uh, but it looks like his scout's trying to come up to him. It does look like... Bubble Bobbler is building level 3s. He has a level 1 out right now, but uh, we are currently... Oh, okay, we are on pause. So, uh, Mugi is backing up with his engineer, Bubble Bobbler, and DK looks like they're trying to get ready for a push. Uh, Metal is probably close to Uber right now, maybe about 80%, although my HUD is broken. Um, but it looks like... Grimjabob is going to come in. He gets a backstab onto Metal, but Metal Ubers. So that backstab is going to be completely nullified. Uh, Carl just mowing down the enemy team, and DK is going to cap the last point. Yeah, Grenjabob bemoaning the fact, saying on the chat, oh man, on my screen he hadn't popped yet, so playing that spy with pinging disadvantage, probably not too fun. We are on a second mid fight now. Um, and DK really kn knowing what to do on those uh, those last pushes, just Ubering in, getting your pyre on the point, and just keeping uh, that cap time, uh, forcing High Panda to have to drop down and just clean up the kills there with Tracker in the first. Shot there, Tracker takes down Metui. That is mid down straight away, oh, but Corsa replies with the body shot, takes down Muki. Both meds down, and we're gonna have to see what happens now. Both teams without heals, um, and the Franks seem to be going in the way of uh, DK at the moment. Yeah, Bandy jumps across that flank doing all this cleanup. He gets a uh, tracker pick and Hildreth picks out of the sniper and a double man down, leaving High Pander alive with only two classes. Mookie does get up 
Uh, so they are both going to be building Uber at probably the same rate. Uh, we see DK trying to push through. They're going to cap uh, mid. They are actually already on second, trying to push out and get closer and closer to their last. Yeah, lots of players still down for High Panda. Um, we have to see if they can actually defend this second point or not, where they just have to give it up. Um, and DK just walking through it forward, holding that W key. Vanny is the furthest one forward, gets so many meat shots down onto the heavy. And we have seen Kakao to join in the game. I'm guessing he will be replacing Kunai as she gets gunned down by DK. He is so far forward, and it's just that aggression and that pressure. And Zapyro is oh, in! Hey, he doesn't need the reserve shooter, Mario. He's just using that flare gun, does take down the medic, and a DK here on the last point already. This is looking almost certain to be 2 0. Sitting up through that, uh, that window room, he just jumped right off to that balcony and just walked right up to the medic. It's completely uncontested and got into free. Not quite sure what happened there, but uh, somebody talking in game. Uh, I can't figure out what's going on. Somebody's making noises. Uh, but yeah, he got through completely for free, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, all those needs. flanks on the last point that we were talking about earlier just kind of sneaked in. So I had to turn off my in-game voice, people were talking, it was distracting. Uh, but <laughs> we are on to a, uh, another mid-fight here. We see Mumu jumping in, trying to get uh, a nice bomb. Of course, he's got his, uh, his eyes on the heavy, but Tracker gets a nice pick onto the land, so there's a DK demo man down. Uh, very big pick for him. Uh, DK bleeding some players, they're sure down right now. Uh, Gorst then runs in, gets a nice Carl pick, and it looks like this is going to go uh, to a high pander mid victory. But Corsa hasn't left yet, gets a nice headshot on the hill just popping across the point. Uh, but it looks like DK is going to back out to defend their second. Yeah, the first mid fight win uh, of this of this map goes to uh, for high pander at least, and uh, they do have 100% Uber. And DK are actually holding further forward than high pander did. They seem to be a bit more aggressive. A big jump in from Muma does a skip jump. But all that damage goes onto Kunai, but she gets taken down by Zan, and they're so far forward uh, that they've actually denied this push already. As goes down as well, and Muki is in no man's land at the moment. It's kind of trapped here with uh, with Gorston. Pyro on Pyro, reserve shooter is going to lay some damage, and the Uber is forced out of uh, DK. And Muki, if he can stay alive, is going to have 100% Uber advantage to push into the second once his team get their respawns. Yeah, Mookie has a 100% uber advantage. Muma trying to do a bomb, does a nice skip jump. He misses a rocket, actually. And Mookie what is going to do a nice surf over to that health pack. Uh, still alive, Uber's on his scout, so we got Ass coming in here, doing a lot of work. Hopefully get some nice cleanup. Uh, also, Uber under the demo. Room. But Carl uh, picks out an un-Ubered, uh, who is the ringer? Cat Cal Cal uh, Cal yeah. Cal two. Uh, gets picked out from Carl on uh, the un-Ubered target in that Uber, and it looks like High Panda is going to lose this push. Yeah, I mean, that was that was really well done by DK. They just had the aggression. You know, they had to force that Uber, sent all their players forward, and somehow Carl was behind them, and uh, he just dealt the damage to the, the un-Ubered players, which caused High Panda to have to fall out. And you can see they're already pushing into last. Got times two on the capture point. Um, but they are pushing into last. Metui at 90% will have his Uber any second now. Muki only at 30%. Not going to be anywhere near. And Tracker is watching that door. If he can get a shot onto. But Kuma gets the backstab onto Muki. The Uber comes in. Vanny is just going to go onto the point. Um, they chase his down the sniper first. And with two players left alive. Ranger pops in behind. Gets one backstab. Needs to get four more. But he can't. <laughs> and it's 3 0, Mario. And I think this I, uh... is a bit of a deja vu going on here. Yeah, I think I saw Muki went through that window room and jumped off the ledge right into Akuma's crosshair. And uh, all he had to do was click and he just got the backstab. Uh, I think that might have been what happened, but I'm not quite sure. But anyway, we're on to our fourth mid of the game. Uh, at Zan POV right now, he's getting a lot of really good spam over in the middle door. He's walking across the point completely uncontested, but Tracker puts his head and forces uh, Zan to back out. Carl doing a little bit of cleanup over here on the flank, trying to contest the other heavy. Uh, I'm not quite sure what High Panda's doing. They're not. Oh, they dropped a player. Uh, okay. I was gonna say like they're not really doing much. They're just kind of sitting in the lobby right now. Uh, but that one player disadvantage is definitely gonna hurt them again. So hopefully the uh, their missing player gets back in, and it is the NG again. So. Hopefully yeah, the the replace. NG sub is now needing to be subbed, I guess. Um, but a nice air shot there. Um, 
in all of that. And to be fair, 100% Uber in the hands of both teams. Um, High Panda didn't do too badly. I think that passive play um, has kept them alive as uh, DK are already pushing on. They're on the second point, but the body shot from Tracker takes down Carl. And uh, High Panda either need to use this and get aggressive or get out as Corsair is looking. He's all. Oh, Mookie uses just in time. And uh, they are getting kills here, High Panda. But the most important thing is Messi. We got to hit Uber and he uses it onto Banny. Can Banny get the kills? Ast is getting kills on the flank. But uh, Banny just gets pushed away by Gorston. And uh, DK somehow have got the point, but they're losing this uh, this fight. Yeah, we got Tracker running Jurati. That actually just saved his life. Uh, Tracker ran, or I'm sorry, uh, Satan ran right in at him, set him on fire. But he threw Jurati and extinguished himself before. Uh, he was able to be killed and his body shot. Satan cleaned him up. Uh, so very good play from him. Uh, we have oh, Grenjamov running in through the entire DK team to get a nice pick onto Zamp. So it's definitely going to stall their uh, stall their last push here. But looks like they don't even care and they want to go in. Uh, Metawi is only at 65% overall. Mookie currently has his. But Fanny is, is actually in the spawn door of High Panther getting frags. Uh, so I think... I think we're going to see a reset here as both teams did drop a couple of players. Medui actually went down and Mookie went down. Unfortunately, I didn't see it in my kill feed. Uh, do you have to know what happened there? It was just like chaos. And Mumi came in and managed to take down Mookie. Um, Ghost a little bit of spy checking and takes down Akuma. But yeah, like you said, it's going to kind of equalize things out here. But if you take a look at Mookie, he is on the Crits Creek. I think it's the first time we've seen a Crits Creek uh, in this series so far. Maybe they're thinking just changing things up a little bit get that advantage early on and just uh, use the aggression against as Muka, Muma sorry, walks straight in Kakao to, um, and gets taken down and course is being really aggressive here oh gets a body shot onto Hildreth but can't take him down and uh, Metui is only approaching 50% now as Muki's on 80% but he's so weak he's on fire he's gonna die to the afterburn Satan there with the flare managing to take Muki down and all this Chris play is out of the window as Metui is gonna be at 70% Uber any second now and uh, they're probably going to be just drive pushing it now, Mario. Yeah, uh, Metawi and Carl uh, went up into the window room and cleaned up the resistance that was up there. They got a nice pick onto Kaltu, uh, and he is currently dead. I'm not sure. Uh, looks like they're going to run in here just on Carl. Metawi has 95 center, but doesn't quite have it yet. Uh, okay, but looks like Carl is going to stand on the point alone and cap. This, yeah, this is a really like interesting area. I'm not sure why teams aren't using it more. Just kind of pushing it through the sewer area, I suppose you can call it, up the stairs, and then this platform just allows you to just drop onto the point, and you're in a really difficult place um, to dislodge. I mean, you have to give up your high ground to defend it. Um, that seems to be the the key factor in all of these last pushes that we are on to our fifth mid now, and Corsa straight away taking down Hildred with the headshot. Tracker replies, and Zoop does take down Zan. Um, to trade and kill was pretty evenly here. Uh, both teams losing players, but four down now, five down now, as Carl guns down Mookie with his minigun. And that comes into even more play when you consider that High Panda still don't have their ninth player, their NG. Um, and DK are going to win yet another mid fight. Yeah, man, we are uh, still building. Oh, what is Mooma doing? Mooma is like glitched up into the. He's like in a light. He's on top of the light on last. Looking down at the respawns, I didn't even know you could get up there. Looks like he's waiting for the high panda medic to uh, come out of spawn. He sees him. Uh, he doesn't quite choose to give up his position yet. Uh, but looks like Mookie is on Chris still. No, he does have a 100% Uber, and Mookie is currently building at 35 with his team. Uh, trying to buff up Tracker to see if he can get any picks. Uh, is Muma still up there? I don't know. Yeah, Muma is still up there above the second. Looks like he's getting ready to make a play. He I wants saw to him go. stand up there earlier, um, right at the end of the round. Um, whether that's intentional or not, I don't know, but he is there. But the Uber did get forced uh, onto Metui earlier, so Mookie is that going to be 100% now? But he's right behind the medic. Lands one, but no. Track takes him down. The shot, and the crit comes out um, onto Kakao 2. The crit, oh, Zub with that crit rocket does take down Carl. It's three up as Metui is running, but he's getting gunned down by Grenjabob. And um, finally goes down to that revolver of pain. I can uh, I can appreciate. Grenjabob has devastating revolver aim and finally does get that medic down. So maybe this is something that High Panda can roll with a bit now. They've got 50% crits once again. Uh, but the difference is DK are going to be aware. Oh my no, god, Akuma. Akuma backstabs him. And uh, we're back to square one. 
Now, back to the drawing board, mate. But, uh, looks like Hypander is going to try to defend this second, although they are pretty weak right now. Uh, a lot of the players are very low on health. Some of them look like they're actually retreating. Uh, if I was Hypander, I would definitely back up to defend my last right here, and it looks like they are going to do so from a very good call from them. Uh, Mookie is up right now. Uh, I'm not sure if he's still on Chris. I'm trying to look. Uh, but Medowee is at 40% Uber. Uh, Kill Mookie is on Chris still. He's at 50%. So we're going to see a very, very small advantage coming in from Mookie. Uh, DK doing a couple stacks with Frank Vanny and Moom are both at the enemy medic, but nothing came out of that. Uh, Mookie is going to have about a 15% Uber advantage. So it looks like they want to use it right away. They're going up into the window on the left flank. Uh, talking they're heavy right now, but they need another class to- Oh, there's a top of laser beam! Mookie doing so much work! Akuma dead, Carl dead, uh, Akuma dead again from that dead ringer. Uh, but those laser moves aren't actually gonna be doing all that much. Uh, looks like they wasted their crits. Uh, I think Medley got out pretty far away as fast as he could. The difference is they used that crit and they got the aggression, uh, which is really good. Uh, but the Uber does come out this time onto Banny. He's launched away by the stickies. Uh, but he does manage to pistol down Kakautu. He's on to Hildreth next, but isn't getting the damage, but Zan is there to follow up. Um, finally, uh, Metu goes down there to Ast, and it's just this huge flank coming in. Ast on a 3k, and Gorson helps down, uh, using that reserve shooter again um, to take down Satan. But somehow, oh no, the body shot in midair from Corsa takes down Zoop. The crits comes in, Muma is in the air, oh, he lands on a crit sticky, and Hildreth <laughs> hits a second to take down Zan. Uh, but the key thing here, Mario, is that Hype Panda still haven't recaptured this second point. Look at Carl, he's hiding underneath this little ramp. I don't think anyone knows that he's there. Feel. Oh my gosh. He's in behind them. Okay, I'm doing a little dance with Tracker. He's trying to do any damage he can, but it looks like he's going to be cleaned up by Ass. Oh, Ass dies. Oh, he gets killed by Mookie's crossbow. It looks like Hype Panda is going to get their Ringer Ender, one of the best engines in North America, playing for KMB. He does come in to sub. Uh, so good to see him. I'm glad that they finally got their last player. Uh, but it looks like DK is going to come in here by force and storm and take over this last point completely in cap it. Unless Zoop has anything oh. to say about that. <laughs> oh, the, the flog is out, Mary. The flog is out onto Gorston. And maybe that's what saved the day. Um, but that cap is down by about 75%. Three up for DK. Corsa, really aggressive in this door. He is just so ballsy. Um, and Tracker does take down Zan. And Ast finally pistols down Corsa. He dodged his bullets for so long. Uh, Carl is hiding once again, but he surely Ast can hear that revved up minigun. I think he's checking all of the corners. I don't want to get surprised um, again. And Hildreth it does get surprised and he gets gunned down. And it just seems Hypander are having issues here deciding how and when they're going to be pushing out from this last point. A very great defense come out from Hypander. They got some really good frags. I thought for sure DK was going to cap it, but they got the respawns just in time. Zub doing a lot of damage on the point to clean them up. But it looks like they're going to try to push out, and they dropped another player. It looks like they're it's heavy. heavy this time, yeah. Heavy is gone again. Uh, so, that's so A lot of kills coming in in favor of Hypander, actually. It's the DKR four down, but the backstab from Akuma takes down Mookie. No medic once again for Hypander. And uh, they're going to have to do the best they can to try and... <laughs> to defend this. People are saying something in the chat. I'm not sure if it was caught on stream whether that was a trick stab or not. Um, but people seem a bit bemused as to why Mookie is dead to Akuma. Um, Tracker is dominating Corsa, so he's winning out the sniper battle this time around. But 100% in the hands of Metui. They're going to be ready to push anytime now. Probably will as soon as Xan has spawned, which is only a couple of seconds away. Um, and now Hildreth there, dominating Muma, taunting after that lock and load air shot. <laughs> the lock maybe load, something man. for him, yeah, maybe something for him to take away and, you know, a little bright moment of this map, which there hasn't been very many uh, so far for High Panda as, uh, sorry, Muki is on 50% crit streak once again. Yeah, and they're really 100% uber, they, they should really go in and use this since they know that they're probably on crit screen. It looks like they're gonna go ahead and use it on Banny. Banny running for it as fast as he can. Uh, Ender got that mini sensor doing a lot of aerial uh, area denial, not letting the DK team run in completely for free. Uh, Tracker gets a nice shot on the Jordan. Muma trying to bomb in, but he actually clips the roof. Uh, and his bomb is going to completely fail. DK dropping a lot of players, high uh, cleaning up a lot of people. Uh, Ender's running that Frontier Justice, trying to store up some crits so what he can get done. Uh, Zan running in by himself with Akuma on the point. Uh, of course, they're being pocketed on the right side. 
Genjimob gets a nice pick on Dazan. Uh, Ass coming in, Genjimob doing a lot of work with that revolver, and Tracker cleaning up Corsa once again. Genjimob is is the saving grace at the moment. Um, he got the backstab onto Carl, revolver down Banny, and has just been trying to clean up with the damage ever since. Uh, but Mookie did go down to Corsa and all of that, but I have to call out Akuma. For bad sportsmanship, Bubble Bobbler came back, said sorry for the disconnect, was typing in the chat, Nakuma ruthlessly backstabbed an AFK player. Oh. Um, so, but Bubble Bobbler is back, but instead of playing NG, he's playing heavy, but nobody's on the last point now as DK just Uber in, and they have the heavy and medic on the point, Ubered, they have to do the best they can, but no tracker takes down Carl. And Zoom finishes up the Medic, and this is cleaning up now from Highlander. Four players left alive. Corsa looks in, takes down Hildred. He's just getting in so deep with those sniper, um, sniper shots. He just nobody is denying him so far. 100% for Mookie. They need to push out now if there's any chance of getting around in this game. But Mookie, I think, is AFK. He's just sits still with 100% crits. Um, he's. I think he's typing in chat, Mario. Yeah, um, I see a lot of stuff going to the chat right now. <laughs> he says. I was typing and you didn't hit me, noob American. So, I mean, it's all coming out now. Um, but Mookie does have 100% crits and they're going to have to use it um, if they're going to take advantage before Metro. Oh, but no. A nice pick on the Mookie. Drops. That's a crits drop. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess that's a crits drop. Uh, Mooma actually trying to get on top of that point on top uh, on that little scoreboard thing again. He's trying to rain down some rockets from above. Carl actually going into the spawn, getting three kills bubbles. Uh, Ender, Ash goes down to Akuma, Ender cleaning up a little bit with that mini sensor, but Muma is still up top causing havoc, and DK is going to cap that point after those last couple picks. That is the end of our vanguard. I, I liked what Carl was doing on that last push. Um, if you kind of look in this like open door, oh, excuse me, open door area where a lot of the pushes came from, instead of going in with the push, he'd walk up this vent, which Excuse me, sorry, I think I've got hiccups. Um, this vent area on the on the top side, which was pretty much guarded only by a mini from High Panda, he'd walk up there, destroy the mini, and then he had this huge height advantage behind the High Panda players, and never really saw High Panda deal with that effectively. And when you've got a heavy, okay, so he's not being healed or anything like that, but if he's gunning down people from above, uh, it's really something difficult that you need to dislodge, otherwise that's just going to cause you problems. And you seem to do it every single push. Yeah, it looks like I just got linked some stats. Uh, Carl, top fragging in the server, followed behind the High Pander Scout Ast, 34 and 31 respectively. Uh, taking a look at the snipers, Tracker definitely playing a little bit better this game, uh, a little bit better than Corsa, but definitely outplaying him. Uh, let me take a look at the SVS. Let's see. Um, we have Tracker with four picks onto Corsa. Uh, while well, Corsa only has one in retaliation, so Chacker definitely picking up that game. Uh, although they did, Hypander did uh, lose at the end. Chacker definitely picked up his game and uh, pulled it out for his team uh, in his own personal experience. But I don't know if we're going over. Are we going over to product next, or what are we doing? Um, yeah, I think the original plan was that we were going to play Barn Blitz on. Um, on an NA server, but I'm not sure whether the spawn times have been fixed or whether you know we have time. I suppose High Panda are you know they're playing two or three members down at the moment with all of these disconnects and subs and subs of subs. So um, we'll have to find out what happens. But yeah, I mean if you look at the stats, um, there was only about kind of 30 kills in it, which isn't that big of a deal, I suppose. Um, you know, in, in advantage of uh, DK, but they had nearly 10k more damage. Um, and I, I just think that player down uh, made a difference, and Mookie died over twice as much as Metui. And if your med's constantly dying, you don't have that extra player to kind of defend or to, you know, hold down a flank or something. Uh, it really does build up and, and make a big difference. And once again, we're seeing a 5 0 uh, for DK uh, on this map. And we'll, I mean, again, after this is the last time I suppose we're going to be seeing this tonight. Um, is there anything that's changed your mind to the, the positive or the negative for this map? Uh, for the map itself, Fubar is an awesome dude, but I, I, I don't really like the map. Uh, I, I really wish we could have gotten a full 9v9 for the entire game. It's pretty unfortunate that we kept having disconnects and the players down, which is not very, not very fun to say the least, but it, it was a good game. Um, I, I think Fubar changed my mind a little bit on the map. I mean, 
be happy to give it another go, but I don't really want to play it in a whole entire another season. Yeah. I mean, require sitting down and discussing. I mean, I don't know. It's the concept is, is there, and it's. I mean, the mid fight is quite interesting. You've got this sort of floating board in the middle um, with the lights on it. Yeah, with the lights on it, very festive. Um, and it's, it's that's nice. I mean, it kind of gives the opportunity for certain classes to get that high ground early on, um, and then later on, you know, if you're defending midpoint, somewhere for you to hold um, in a protective. Uh, protected area but yeah i mean it just seems that there was a, a clear difference between the the two teams in that one team knew where how to play it and the other team didn't um, i would have liked to have seen two teams who actually knew how to play the map um, had some sort of prior experience on it would have been very interesting um, and as you said 9v9 would have also given a, a better idea of the map but maybe there's something there and you know needs to be to be finished up a bit i'm not sure um, we do have a, we do have a, another um, update. That apparently, the spawns have been fixed for barn blitz, um, but it does look like we are finishing up now. I think the players have uh, played long enough and uh, unable to play anymore. So maybe more players have to go. So we're going to be uh, going into some interviews, I believe, with some of the players from the teams. Yeah, we got a uh, Fubar coming back. Uh, Metawi okay. and Carl are both going to join us. Actually, they're here right now. Uh, Carl, Metawi, Fubar, how was it? How are you guys doing? Hello. Uh, Carl's actually AFK right now. I am Carl's back. AFK. Hey, Carl, oh. what's up? Too Hello. Bad. Well. So, uh, how was that? You guys got any... Uh, how are you feeling? How was the maps? Which one did you like the best? I've sort of always enjoyed Vanguard, and I think the newer changes make it significantly better. I enjoyed Vanguard. Nice. Uh, since I didn't really play last season, or when Vanguard, Vanguard was played, like this was the first time I played it, and I thought it was definitely better than my plates. That's mostly just because, you know, the last point is still a problem. With like, not just the spawn times, but like just the way it's set up. I don't know, it's it's hard to push. push. Pushing or pushing or defending? Yeah, pushing, pushing, definitely. Pushing? Okay. I'm and, disappointed uh, we didn't get to see um, Barn Blitz with, you know, at least normal spawn times, because I feel if you were to, to play it with the regular spawn times, like a lot of, you know, us in the European leagues have, um, the last point with all of the changes and the new openings, it has made it very much, much easier um, to push in, as we are joined in by Mookie um, from High Panda to uh, maybe talk to us, and, and Hildreth as well. Sorry, yeah, fuck Hildreth, there. he doesn't exist. <laughs> Um, so I guess I'll pose the same question uh, to you guys. Which of those two maps do you uh, would you prefer? And I can kind of maybe already expect the answer. Well, five CP is good, but we didn't know the map at all. So I don't, I can't really say anything about Van Vanguard. We were just starting to kind of get the hang of the map a little bit. Um, Defense wise, Bomb Blitz. We just know the map, so. We just knew how to play it. Yeah, I could see that. That's what I was thinking from the whole time. From from the beginning, I felt like you guys would, would know that map a lot better than, than the NA players. And it looked like it should. We definitely knew what we were doing on Vanguard. <clears throat> I can see that too. It looks like it played out well. <laughs> Although, you guys wore down a player for pretty much most of the game, which is pretty unfortunate. It wasn't really a fair fight. Um, well, it wouldn't have changed anything, to be honest. We like... would have still lost. No. Bad, Maybe it would have taken guard. a minute or two more, but like, it really doesn't matter. It's like when you play against one of the best teams in North America, mm -hmm. and like you have never played a map before. It's not going to go well. You guys have any uh, any thoughts? What do you think you could have done better? Maybe maybe change something to 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 push through. Any well, idea? One solo played game a map is before. didn't get DDoS. Um, yeah, practiced the map before. Yeah, we just didn't really know where to hold, where to stand. Um, we're kind of unsettled. Um, plus, your team were just wrecking us, and you're like, you're always in so quickly, and we're not reacting to it. So uh, also, practice. if anybody from chat has any questions, go ahead and, and post them as well, and we'll ask those out. So, um, so to uh, to Carl and Metui, looking at um, Barn Blitz, 
ignoring the fact that the spawn times are a little bit screwed up. Um, from your point of view, is there anything on that map that can kind of be improved that would make you maybe more open to it being added to a UGC season? Um, I think that's a pretty hard question. Um, there's been a lot of different versions and a lot of different changes. And my personal point of view, I feel like starting with a map that maybe has like a better layout to start with and try to improve on something like that could be a better approach because I think it's just hard to change Barn Blitz, the stock map, which is fairly terrible to something that's playable and competitive. I think it's just very challenging to sort of adapt in that way. I agree fully. <laughs> yeah. Remember, like, when it was last played in UGC in, like, 2011, I think? Uh, yeah. Most people said that, like, the last one was the problem. And, like, I remember, I think you were the one who said, like, you, don't, you didn't really want to change, like, the original design too much. But, like, I think mm -hmm. that's still the, the biggest problem of that map. Yeah, it's just a really hard map to fix. Uh, yeah. It's kind of a mess in many ways. Got a question from Tom TF2. I'm guessing this is for for everybody. Uh, what's so bad about Barn Blitz and Comp the map? Oh oh, pick me. You got it, Hildred. I don't actually think Barn Blitz is bad. Spoiler alert. Uh, we've been playing it for a few seasons. Uh, the only it would have been a lot better if, if the spawns were actually fixed on that map because last was. It was very hard point to push anyway last, but then yeah. it just became <laughs> impossible. Like, yeah. At the end, that med dropped, and um, I was like, oh no, I owe a three second respawn, this is going to be easy. Yeah, you'd get a pick, and it meant nothing because they would respawn right away, so... But I think in both respects, you would, have, you would have capped like very early on in your initial push onto last, but because they had the faster respawns, that's why I ended up into this kind of gritty scenario where you could never get Probably. through. Uh, we'll, the uh, same happened for like UK as well. Like they had plenty of pushes. That if the like spawn times were actually proper, then the push would have won. But think about especially last like one of the last ones. Why you interrupt me, Mickey? No, it's my job. Fine. But I was gonna say the thing about last is since they added a new flank, there's a lot of good attacking options um, in a way, and there's sort of two different styles being shown. The Americans are always aggressive and pushing people out. We're just sitting inside the point, and they well, they were both effective because it was so unbalanced. But like, I like the the way the points are kind of set up. Um, it's not the best map, but it's certainly better than Swift Water. Like, if I had to pick a third PL map, it would be that map over Swift Water or Borneo. Both of those maps are just awful. Well, I remember like before this version, the last version that was played, that was played in an A. Um, it also had like that flank side. And the spawn timers, I think, weren't this bad. Like, it was still very hard to push. The difference on this version, though, like, not the one that was made last night, but the kind of the opening area, the stairs, has been made wider. Oh, There's yeah. Like a you're ramp right. towards the spawns and things like that, which kind of, I don't know, I suppose I'm from the same kind of school of thought as Hildreth, having played it the past few seasons as well um, in Europe. And it just seems much easier to do something on those front stairs rather than it being an impossible choke point that you can just rain spam down on. Yeah. Um, so it's a shame we didn't get to see that kind of in full action. Um, coming to like Hildreth and Mookie, um, looking at Vanguard as a first impression, I suppose, is that a map you could see ETF2 using in the future or is it something that you just want to forget very quickly? I have no comments on that map because I, I just don't really know it, so I can't really judge it. Mookie. Pretty much the same, like, playing one map, getting destroyed. It's like you don't learn much from it. Like, from my point of view, it was just really messy, like, 5 million flanks everywhere, but that's just because I don't know the map. Like, maybe if I actually bothered to look at map before, I could, like, look at spots where it's good to hold, good to heal from. But, like, Best it just seemed is... really bad for me. Best part is being flanked in spawn all the time, but nobody knew what yeah. was going on. There's, like, someone said, there's a spy in our spawn, and I was like... And I was walking back upstairs, and I didn't know the spy could get me on the stairs. But honestly, my like opinion is that any map to replace Processor Gullywash would be fine. Kind of bored of playing the same two maps for like five seasons. Sunshine. No. The last season. I didn't play last season. Highlander Bad Lads. Um, I've I've one question in general. I mean, I suppose Carl and Metui, you had more experience facing this. Um, we had some different unlocks tonight that maybe each side was unused to seeing. The only one that we really saw 
in action kind of doing anything decent was the reserve shooter there was a moment where Gorston ran in and killed both you guys uh, with the reserve shooter based on that uh, do you think it's still a fair unlock or I mean do you think the changes have made it a fair unlock or do you think it's still a little bit too uh, overpowered to be allowed I think the changes to where they have to be actually like launched into the air versus just casually jumping to get mini crits I think that's a step in the right direction but I think just sort of the nature of the game with so many people rocket jumping and the air blast being pretty long range compared to like like a splash damage explosion to launch people that it's fairly easy to launch people in the air and then it seems to be just a shotgun with extra damage extra damage and so I think it's still too strong. Yeah, well, that, I, I would... agree. Well, yeah, and it, and it even has a faster switch speed, so it's I think it's also too strong to allow it. Uh, not just the reserve shooter, but any of the other unlocks. Do you guys have any any comments? Anything about that? We saw a little bit of flog action, but not very much. It looks like it it only lasted a life or two. Uh, do you guys have anything to say? Uh, we... Sorry. Okay. For the flog, it seems like. Because there's no air blast, it would really hurt the team that's trying to run it. Because air blast is so key to reflecting spam and enemy ubers that it almost seems like a weapon that you would use to sort of troll the other team if you're rolling them. You just sort of like rub salt in the wound. But I don't think it's overly powerful that it would need to be banned. Yeah, I agree. The flog, considering it's getting rid of the air blast, which is the most powerful thing the Pyro has, is no way it's overpowered. The reserve shooter probably. And uh, it feels like it gives just a bit too much to the pyro, but then again, pyro is a really terrible class. It does nothing anyway, so I wouldn't care if it was banned or unbanned. So the chat's going crazy. Uh, Dashner body pillow question mark. I think the initial question was people wanted to know about Mookie's body pillow, and yeah. it's advanced onto making Dashner a body Dashner pillow. body pillow. So Mookie, people want to know about your body pillow. Questions <laughs> revolve around: Is the body pillow OP? Is the body pillow MLG? Is the body pillow a picture of you? Well, thing is, first of all, I'm going to have to disappoint everyone and say I don't have a body pillow. That's no, why I'm terrible at the game. If I had a body pillow heel dress like behind me, I would get so much energy from it. I would become the best player ever. I wouldn't need to switch from soldier to medic because I'm terrible. There it is, folks. <laughs> Do we have any like actual questions now, though? I'm, I'm done with questions, Mary, unless you've got anything else. Uh, I, yeah, I, ha I have one left, one left. Machina. Uh, did, did you notice any difference in gameplay from snipers not being able to run the Machina, or was, did I not play anything? Either way, um, either way, every time I peeked Corsa, he just headshot me anyway. I don't, I don't really know. If sniper's that good, he's just going to headshot you. You might as well just ban the sniper rifle. Make everyone run Huntsman, that'd be more fun. Your opinions are terrible, Hildreth. I'm on a team with you. I think from what I saw, it was kind of a small sample size, and those maps aren't particularly suited, especially to snipers, on like maps like Upward or Viaduct or Product now. And so I think it's not the best maps to showcase the Machina ban or its use. And so probably not the best picture on that question. Okay. Um, I don't see anything else in the chat. Does anybody have any more questions? Anything uh, else you guys want to say? Any shout -outs? I was just going to add um, that the thing with the Machina is that like the sniper gameplay doesn't really change. It just improves on it. Like, even if you ban the Machina, like, the sniper is still going to play the same way. But with the Machina, like, you can just do extra damage. So it's not like... Isn't it like it's, you really notice it? Yeah, 178, yeah. Okay, that's a bit of ridiculous. The big thing... 173. Yeah, it's 173. And the big oh. thing with that is that it allows, uh, if you buff a sniper to 185 to sort of peak and counter snipe, you have to keep rebuffing the sniper every four seconds if there are other snipers using the Machina, or else they'll drop below 173 and then can just instantly die to one body shot. To kind of but, actually body shot now on the Machina. Yeah, and so you have to be buffing the sniper over and over again. But if they're on the stock sniper or any other sniper rifle, I believe it's eight seconds that it takes for the buff to decay to 150. So what's the 
trade off to the Mac and the like, what's No, the no scopes. Yeah. No scopes. Uh, that's no, what no I meant scopes to ask. Oh, can you actually body shot? I meant no, no scope. Can you actually no scope? Well, I don't know, make no scopes can be pretty useful. I don't really know. I can't really say whether that's a fair balanced trade off. Also, it makes it very obvious where you are because it leaves a tracer, sort of, so you, if you ever struggle to know where the sniper is, but I suppose no, that's not really that much it. of a trade off. Ender has some more exact numbers in chat of the buff decay times. And then what I find about the sort of drawbacks of the Maka with the no no scoping and the tracers is that oftentimes, at least in uh, more ex for more experienced players and teams, the tracers don't give that much away as oftentimes teams will be common where the enemy sniper is and so that's sort of negated by having like a team environment and then with the no no scopes oftentimes if you're sort of isolated as a sniper and you need to be no scoping you're probably going to die anyways so i don't think it's has that much of an effect on whether you live or die or actually impact the game yeah all right well we got one last question from Abok. He's just got a couple questions on some weapons. The Bizarre Bargain, Hitman's, Heatmaker, Cleaner's Carbine. Any thoughts on those? Are they any good at all? Do you, did they see any comp play? Hitman's Heatmaker. <laughs> I, those weapons are so irrelevant. I don't think they... I don't think, anybody ran, I don't think anybody ran Bizarre Bargain today, did they? I don't believe so. No, I don't think so. I know some people have used the Heatmaker in the past. Specifically, Jake has used it quite a bit in his later seasons but i think it's a decent item but they're definitely it's sort of a in a spot where maybe for some players they'll like the benefits but it doesn't really matter for everyone sniper still a sniper they have more powerful weapons to use so i don't see why they would care what i found weird is didn't wasn't the isn't the razorback banned in this or is it in ugc uh, somebody told me th is allowed in UGC. Somebody told me the Razorback was banned for this. I don't, but this, that's what I found weird. It's just a, for the secondary weapons. There are so many better secondaries you can use, so it doesn't really matter if you ban it or not. Um, Metawi and Carl, uh, how do you guys feel about playing against the Lock and Load? Uh, do you have any uh, any responses for that? Um... Kind of hard to see with Hildreth being on high ping for some of the maps, and then us being on. I ping just sort of makes projectile usage a little bit odd, but I think with the changes they made to it with it doing less damage, um, that was that's a pretty big drawback compared to its old version, but from my perspective, the fact that it still goes really fast and the arc is more flat makes the pipes easier to hit, so it seems to be an upgrade for defending yourself and sort of going for direct damage, which... I think is the primary way that pipes are used for demos is sort of not the main damage source and I think lock and load just does a better job than pipes in that respect. To be honest, yeah, I to be honest I didn't really notice it much. Just because I'm split medic. Uh so yeah, I couldn't really give you a better answer for that. Well one, I wouldn't have hit them anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> um two we we've played with it for two seasons since it's um been nerfed again, I think, slightly. It's, I would say, it's fine. Um, generally, people want the extra ammo. The projectile speed is good, which people use it kind of situationally to spam from longer range and things like that. Um, but loose cannon was a weapon that was far more contentious. And then there's just the normal pipes. I tend to use the normal pipes, so it's probably other demos will be more effective with it. Certainly, rest in peace, loose cannon. Zan was hitting more. Pipes on me. That was fun. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us, Fubar, Hildreth, Carl, Meadowy. Uh, that's it for the interviews. I'm just gonna wrap us up here. Uh, you guys just finished watching the ETF2L and UGC Highlander Showmatch series, the Map Maker Showcase Number One. Uh, I've just been linked a couple of shoutouts here. Um, thank you to Fubar and Bubble Bobbler for making the maps and for uh, letting us interview them. Uh, also, thank you to Hildreth and Hi Pander for uh, playing and helping us organize. Also, Carl from DK and all the DK players uh, for helping us organize and for coming to play. Uh, also, ETF2L admin uh, Kaltu uh, for the ringing and the organization of the event. 
Also, shout out to admin Kumari from UGC uh, and For Not for their help as well. Um, Jesse for her promotional art, Blackout John for his help, uh, Ari and Ender for their servers, uh, and Moof for her help with some of the servers as well. Uh, also, don't forget that you can donate to the leagues down below the stream to the ETF2 and the UGC. Uh, leads uh, really helps them out um also don't forget that there are shirts down below available for purchase uh also uh supporting the casters dashner um sorry I forgot who they are it's for uh yes dashner uh atwis uh deer and a flatline um the shirts are awesome go and check them out they're available in unisex and female um, the money supports EVLTV and the casters um, themselves. Uh, CJ, do you have anything left? Uh, no, you've got it all covered, man. Uh, thank you for, thank you to the players for playing. Thank you to the map makers, and thank you to you, Mary, for being a great co-caster and Dashna for sorting out everything behind the scenes. It was awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah, good job. And thanks for playing.